正常，正正常，正常，正常，正正正常，正常，正常，正常，正常，正常，正常，正常，正常，正常，正常，正常，正常，正常，正常，正常，正常，正常，正常，正常，正常，正常，正常，正常，正常，正常，正常，正常，正常，正常，正常，正常，正常，正常，正常，正常，正常，正常，正常，正常，正常，正常，正常，正常，正常，正常，正常，正常，正常，正常，正常，正常，正常，正常，正常，正常，正常，正常，正常，正常，正常，正常，正常，正常，正常，正常， What's the change? We don't know. We have no idea. I don't know how many times.、Uh, it's so funny. It's like I, I don't think anybody believes what we tell them. They just don't. You, you just you refuse to believe it. We're not consulted. We don't know anything. Nothing. It's you know. It's、um, you know. There's a hundred. Well, how many talk shows? Thirty or forty talk shows, stations, or whatever. I don't know what the hell. You know. I mean it. They just tell you what to do around here. It's a fucking army. It's the you know, you better do it. You better do it or else. Yeah.、Uh, by the way,、uh, we had a conversation about Fahrenheit and Celsius yesterday, Garrett. You missed quite an exciting show.、Um, <laughs> we did. I don't even remember that part. Jay thought you just added 32 degrees to Celsius. Why, why can't you do that? If zero is freezing in centigrade, as they call it, or Celsius. Uh, then why would you just add thirty-two degrees? It's nine fifths plus thirty-two. Wow.、Um, wow. No, no, it's five nine. Where were you very yesterday? Five, nine, very,、so. impre yeah. very impressive. See, he's very smart. I don't understand when people say he's such a fucking idiot. Here's the thing. Now, now, here's the、Give、weird thing. Here it、word. is.、Mm -hmm. Celsius degrees are a larger temperature change.、Mm. Correct. <laughs> he's like then, amateur hour. Well, thirty-two then does to two thousand is、degree. different than zero to a hundred. Right. Can you turn your mics up a little bit? You guys are very low.、Um, How's that? Is that better? Well, yeah. I mean,、going? well. <laughs> yeah.、Um, I don't get what that means. Each Celsius、That's、degree、true. represents a larger temperature change than does a Fahrenheit degree. Hmm. Because thirty-two to two twelve, which is freezing to boiling, is、mm -hmm. more numbers than zero to a hundred in Celsius. So each degree is so is a hundred degrees Celsius boiling. Yes, and two twelve Fahrenheit is boiling. Correct.、Mm -hmm. So you are correct, Garrett.、Uh, to get Fahrenheit to Celsius, you subtract thirty-two,、oh. and you multiply by five ninths, which is one hundred one eightieth. Reduced to its lowest terms, because、um, it divides the range between the freezing point of boiling water, which is 100 degrees、uh, of of Celsius, and 180 degrees of Fahrenheit. Garrett is 100 percent correct. Okay, can I ask you this? Why do we need to know this? Because we're Fahrenheit here in America.、Okay. Because we have Canadian listeners. Yeah, but they should already know it themselves. Yeah, they live if there. If they're listening they to an American、we、show,、don't. shit, they should know all about Fahrenheit. And then they can sit there and mock us for not knowing.、Yeah. We, we know, they don't know.、Uh, by the way, you may not remember him,、uh, but we had this uh, uh, crazy. What was the show we had the crazy producer on who was a big fan of mine and all? What's this?、Uh, this first that myth mythbusters.、Yeah. <laughs> no, well, this first that.、Uh, what, what what cable channel is that on? Is it on a the internet? Is it on a good channel? <laughs> It's on the internet. Yes. Oh, it's not even a show. No. Oh. <laughs> And poor Mark DiCarlo is the host on an internet show. Yes. <laughs> oh. Oh my God. But he's kind of a, like a utility man. He does everything all the time. He's doing stuff. So he yeah, he, he does. Yeah, he's he always does, busy.、Yeah. He、Mark、just is, takes. I did a show with him. him.、Uh, it was called、uh -huh. Sunday Dinner. And he was the host of it, and、mm -hmm. and my、mm -hmm. mom and dad were in the show. Kate and Marianne were in the show, and they came over. Sunday we, dinner. We made Sunday dinner, and we sat down. We ate it. He well, loves food. That was the name of the show, Sunday dinner. Well, he's a, a、uh, he, he's a travel. I mean, I, I've known him for years.、Uh, we did a we did a show called、um, King of the Mountain,、uh, a Japanese、uh, quiz show that was、uh, taken over by the United States, and uh, and um, this big football player who's. Heart exploded from you know who knows what he was doing.、No. Um, okay. Matuzak,、uh, John Matuzak stood on the top of a mountain, <laughs> and like a hundred contestants tried to go up the mountain, and he would knock them down with boulders and you know fake boulders and stuff. <laughs> But people got their shoulders separated, they got their knees blown out,、um, and it was a great show. But they didn't, they didn't. What、run. a great show, King of the Mountain, <laughs> King, King of the, the Mountain. And and I was I was really doing a lot of good work. I was working, you know, doing the big sit counts, but they offered me a bunch of money, so I wore 
uh, a baseball cap, um, a scarf around my neck, and sunglasses. So you kind of couldn't tell who I was. <laughs> and and the director kept saying, uh, Jay, can we see more of your face? You know, can we see more of your face? And I, I said, no, I don't know. I don't want to show it. But I met Mark, and he was, uh, I, 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 maybe that was the show. I, I don't. I don't know. I'll, I'll have to. I, that now that I'm thinking of it, you weren't on Sunday dinner. You would have, that would have been a great show. I don't you. know. I don't. That sounds like something I would have done. He won an Emmy uh, in 2011 as a comedy contributor to ABC's morning show, Windy City Live. <laughs> That's what he still does. It's like Chicago so he's like Chicago Chicago. morning show. Oh, it is. Oh, he's oh a okay. Chicago guy. All right, okay. great. So he's like me. He's doing something, you know, in his in his hometown. And he did. He uh, hosted one of my favorite shows. Uh, the travel, what? oh God, what's it called? One of your favorite what? shows. One of my favorite shows, but it was like sure, 10 yeah. years ago. You're like um, me. On the Travel Channel, it was American, mm -hmm. oh God. Mm -hmm. Driving mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. eating burgers and stuff. Uh, dear Jay, this comes from Nick at Jay Thomas Show at Gmail. Hey, hey, seven, when I first, yeah, there we go. Well, uh, when I first started listening to Kevin, I hated uh, Kevin. Uh, uh, I didn't like the fact that he would step all over your monologues. Uh, he has cheesy jokes. Uh, now he's been on quite a bit. And um, uh, he's becoming quite a good talk radio broadcaster. But, now listen okay, to this. Okay, this, is sorry, pretty, sorry. this is pretty deep. Okay. He needs to learn to open up. His bad jokes and old-time references, I think, are a defense mechanism to keep from being honest with an audience and probably because he lived as a closeted homosexual for so many years uh, that he wasn't used to opening up, and he was used to being closed off. You need, Kevin, to treat the studio as a safe place to talk about yourself. Okay. Everything doesn't have to be a joke. We know you're funny. Just be real. Your humor will come out naturally. Now, who is the story about that? disposing of your porno magazines, <laughs> throwing them out of the window, was absolutely hysterical. It is a great example of what I'm talking about. I hope you do that that story on stage. If you're honest, people will relate to you, and when they relate to you, you become beloved by the audience. Don't worry about being gay. Howard is George Takei from Star Trek on all the time, who's a very flamboyant gay person. He's totally honest about his personal life. I don't want to do all that. We don't, need, we don't need all that kind of honesty. No. He talks about how his husband got fat and all that kind of stuff, right? Um, he's more of a screamer than Kevin. I don't need all that screaming stuff. But anyway, this is actually, um, um, uh, that was a, a, a pretty, um, oh, P.S. I've been sober a month. <laughs> <laughs> well, what a very delightful letter. I sometimes a man rectally administer. Wait a minute! I sometimes rectally administer huge doses of painkillers. <laughs> oh my God! This is from Nick. That was, uh, that was very insightful. Is there uh, an applicator you used for that too? When you like a suppository? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Oh you. Ooh. No, no. You just yeah. You, 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 there is an applicator. You put it in there, and you, it's like a, a syringe with a big opening. Ooh. You know, when you push it up in there, people have a lot of. Time uh, my in brother, hands, my they? brother was saying um, the most ODs. You know, my brother had this drug testing company. The most ODs ever were especially women who put cocaine uh, in their butthole. Mm -hmm. uh, the butthole is the most absorbent, uh, you know, uh, place on your on your body next to your nose. I think right. And so um, it, it, the the coke would get into the system so quickly that. Um, uh, women, especially prostitutes, would want the coke put up their butt, or they would do it themselves. That's where Liza would always do her coke, and it would <laughs> she would do it in her butt because she would, and she would say, "Yeah, because of my cords, I don't want to ruin my cords, my cords." My now, cords. now that's alleged. How would you know what it's Liza? It's true. Would do? Well, how would you know? Well, this is a great because story. Nick, worked, Nick, you know what, Nick? Your letter's already worked. <laughs> it's already worked. Because I worked Not with a, a bunch of guys that, that worked with her, and on the mm -hmm. on the show that mm -hmm. she was doing about Kay Thompson, and she was going all around mm -hmm. the world doing the show, and it was the time mm -hmm. when they were, everybody was doing blow. Does your I, anus get numb? I I, I, yeah. I would guess it would. Yeah, that's another reason for it. Yeah, I then, knew, but then you can't control it. You can't. I knew somebody that yeah, yeah, you can. I knew a guy that in Boston many many mm -hmm. years ago, and he didn't want to do coke in his nose. So he would open up his eyeball. Oh God! And he would put the mm. coke in his eyeball. Oh, that sounds so painful. Hmm. And he was studying to be a doctor. 
Well, that'll cure glaucoma, I think. Mm-hmm. Isn't that weird, though? Um, uh, dear Jay, you discussed The Wolf of Wall Street. I like the movie. And then you discussed the guy and the people that, that ripped everybody off and all this kind of stuff. There was an article by the daughter of one of the guys indicted. Um, her dad was Tom Prusalis, and she sent an open letter to the Washington Post and said what a terrible person her father was and what a terrible person this, um, um, this uh, Belfort, I don't know what his Wolfie. first name is. Uh, Wolf Belfort, whatever his name is. And, and yes, absolutely. I, um, I believe that. I know that to be true. And, and after these people, they don't, they don't do a lot of time. You know, a few of them got 20 years, but most of the guys, Belfort got, um, five years. I can't believe I they only got five years. Well, they have money stashed all over the world and they're able sometimes to pay the fine. And they turn state's evidence. And so that's it. But then they are just as big as scumbags after it's over as they were before. And I absolutely believe that. I mean, there's nothing worse than a reformed anything, you know, whore, drug addict, alcoholic, whatever. They Homo. get into all of this other shit. You know, they, they become, you know, he, you know, he now gives speeches about what a bad guy he was, right, and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, no, I'm sure he's terrible, terrible person, and ruined his uh, first wife and ruined his uh, second wife's uh, life and and everything else. I mean, there's no, there's no doubt. How did and he ruin they make the these women's m- lives? Well, you got to see the movie. Oh, okay. What I tell you that if if this is sugarcoating it, it's it's the most horrible. This guy's the most horrible person you've ever seen. Really? He does. This movie is horrifying. But do you like from, him? Uh, you know, no. No. Do you like no. the, Leonardo DiCaprio plays the wolf? Of oh my God, he's great. But here's but, what they but you do. don't you don't like his character at all. Here's here's what 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 you're taught uh, when you're writing a screenplay. Mm-hmm. You have to have a kitten moment. Well, this is what I'm must trying to get a, out of you. Yes, go ahead. A kitten you moment. have to have a kitten mo- yeah. a kitten moment. And so if you just show a person, and I remember the example. Um, there was a hard-bitten uh, 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 cop uh, show or a movie, and I want to say that Nicolas Cage or mm. somebody was the star of it, and and the the test audiences just said, you know, God, we 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 don't like him, you know, wherever it was, we don't like him. Mm-hmm. So the producers sat down. And they said, look, we we can't really go back in and do some kind of scene where he you know gives money to charity. So the guy said, I tell you what, we have a scene already where he picks his wife up from work and she just jabbers about her day at work and the kids in the car for 45 seconds and he listens intently as, a, as a, like a good husband mm-hmm. so the producer goes well what's that going to do and the guy says maybe this is our kitten moment they put that scene in the movie like you know 20 minutes in and sure enough all of uh, whatever he did after that, all of the uh, comments changed completely. It's the kitten mo. It literally in some movies they'll show a guy blowing a village up, but he saves a puppy, mm-hmm. right? That shows the audience that you know deep down inside he's an okay guy and he's doing this thing. In this movie, Leo Leonardo DiCaprio is a really sweet guy in the beginning and loves his wife. Mm-hmm. And is a, a really cool, and then he's he's turned astray by Matthew McConaughey, who who only is in the show for five minutes and is fantastic. So so they have that little moment, but you forget it later, you know. You see, here's the deal. Uh, somebody called me this morning, a cold call. Hello, hello, sir. I go, yeah. Uh, this is uh, Wayne, you know, Diamanto of uh, you know, tele. Telecharge, uh, blah, 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 blah. I say, hey, hey, Wayne, listen. Uh, when, when I hang up on you, you go fuck yourself. Okay? You, you gonna f- fucking thief. You, you, you pray meister. You know, are you kidding? And you hang up. Yeah. I love What's doing weird that. is, you, I love doing that. Well, you so know what? Much. Do you know how many people are going to talk to him today? <clears throat> how many? A lot. He's going to make a bunch of money. 
You think so? Yeah. Yeah. How would you like to make 15% on your investments? What are you making now? I, you know, I can't really talk about, are you making 8% or 7%? It's been a great market. I, my clients have been making 15%. And the next thing you know, somebody's listening to them. Yeah. It's hard to believe those boiler rooms still exist. And, and it's, um, it's really weird. Um, and, and elderly people. Oh, you know, they, they, they get my mother every day of the week. She goes, I can't even answer the phone anymore. You know, she they don't want to be rude. And she doesn't. Rude. Want, and I get on the phone the other day. I was at her house, and I, I just started cursing at the guy. You yeah. living piece of shit! Don't how dare! And my mother's in the background. Stop cursing at the man! Yeah. And I, I, I and I've never been that. I was so upset that they have just play well, on. Here's the citizens new thing. Every day. Here's the new thing that you're supposed to do. The person calls up and they're going to sell you something. Mm -hmm. And they want your um, credit card number. So you talk to them and you listen to their thing and you listen to their thing. And uh, you, because time is money. So now they think they have you. And you give them a credit card, but you transpose numbers. So it's not. A, they come back and they go, oh, I'm sorry. But that's. And you go, oh, um. Gosh, I'm doing it from memory. Um, oh, I can't find my wallet right now. You you give them another one, mm -hmm. and that's wrong. And you you just keep giving them wrong information, and you keep them on the phone for ten or fifteen minutes, and they'll never call you back, ever. <laughs> they don't want to be on the phone with you. Can them. you record these phone calls too? Yeah, you can. That's the and also, as soon as the government tries to close one down because they're against the law, mm -hmm. another one pops up. Yeah. And they're the same companies over and over again that are used. It's really uh, unbelievable. Oh, I just hate and, them. And well, they, they can't, that somebody they can't would talk on, to you on the phone. You but know? they can't do it on cell phones. They don't call you on your cell phones. No, they called me on my cell this morning. They did? I've never sure, the cell a phone. I never get a robocall. Or, or, you know, oh, no, the, the cell phone cell companies phone. sell your telephone number. Absolutely. That's they do. never. They I've never gotten a phone call on my cell phone ever. Oh no! Every night at dinner time, I get a phone call. That they tell you to call at dinner time, something like that. Now, to me, um, if I could find those people, mm -hmm. it's like the Chinese. I read an incredible thing about th there were pirates, uh, and they were killing people, and they were stealing these giant you know, multi-million dollar ships and cargo and everything else. And they were Chinese pirates. So the Chinese government sends out the Navy and everything else, and they find out where they are. They capture 25 of them, and they publicly execute them. Well, guess what? The Chinese pirate thing is kind of over now. Okay? That's what we don't do. We don't hurt anybody enough. So we should Five publicly... years execute yes. or just torture yes. the uh, phone solicitors. Yes. yes. That would be great, uh, you know, to publicly shame them. Would that bother you, Christina, if a phone solicitor were executed, not executed, tortured, but they called you during the torture so you could hear him? No, that's the only way you I want to warn those people calling me is so that I, there's something interesting to hear on the other line. Right. Yeah. So here's the deal. They find the guy, Kevin. They find him. Mm -hmm. But you don't see him get tortured. But they call you, and you get to listen to it on the phone that he used to offend us. Okay. I like that. I like that. Mm -hmm. I like a lot. I love it. Uh, let's go to Mike, who's in New York. Yes, oh, Mike, go ahead. Mike. Hey, Jay, you there? Yeah, I'm here. Jay, how you doing, buddy? Happy New Year. Mm -hmm. um, so mm -hmm. I grew up literally next door to Jordan. Uh, my brother and him were actually best friends. Jordan Most, Belfort. And, 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 What's that? Jordan Belfort. What, Jordan yeah. Belfort. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Jordan Belfort. Uh, I was mm -hmm. actually more close with his brother, who was a year older. But um, this guy was selling ice cream on a beach, and and working for a meat distribution company. And literally the next year, he'd be driving around in a Lamborghini and Ferraris. Like every day with different colors. Like he was 25 years old. These mm -hmm. guys were making money 
hand over fist, they robbed people of their life savings. The movie didn't go into too much of that, but it kind of take the boiler room and, you know, mix the two of them in and you get it, you know, get a sense of what they did. He would take companies public that were like, you know, these sham companies. He'd buy the companies, own up, you know, 80, 90% of their stock. He'd have all these kids pump up the stock. And when the stock got to a certain amount, they would sell all their shares. The stocks would plummet. And these people were all left holding the bag. Oh. Now, know, now he, he, would, he would do it. The, the, when you say a sham company, um, you know, I have a well, company, J. Thomas. Well, I, I have J. Well, Thomas Enterprise. I have J. Thomas Enterprises. Big Pants Corporation over here. There you go. Let's say we took J. Thomas Enterprises, which is worth nothing, and Big Pants Corporation, which is worth nothing. We Excuse would me. we would pretend that it made something and that it had value. Who would who would buy the stock to pump it up that we could even sell it? Our listeners would buy the that, stock. Your listeners and their <laughs> clients, they would have these hungry investors, these uh, sales guys, Get on the phone and get 500 calls a day and tell these guys, listen, you're a loser if you don't buy the stock. It's a mm dollar -hmm. now. It's going to go to 10. And these guys will turn over their checkbooks. The stock would go to 10. Go for it. These cronies would sell, sell the stock. They would walk away with millions of dollars and the stock would drop down a, you know, a nickel or a penny. That was mm -hmm. one way they did it. They did a lot of other shit, but he also owned, he funded a number of other boiler room firms to kind of mask some of the shit that was going on in Stratton Oakmont. So this guy had his mm. hand. Most of the story is accurate. His wife's name was Nadine, not Naomi. Mm. That was one example. His real, mm -hmm. real wife was mm -hmm. better looking than the blonde that was in the movie. I mean, she was the a, blonde a in the movie is a, is a newcomer and she is yeah. so gorgeous and she's a great actress. Is that her accent? If that's, if that's not her accent, she's going to work forever. If she no, really has so that, 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 accent, that New York Australian. accent, you know, that's a tough one. That's a tough one to overcome. No, that it's like that. Australian. And, oh, um, God, you're kidding me. Oh, my God. She's Australian. Uh, and, uh, Kevin, she is unbelievable. She is stunningly gorgeous. Mm -hmm. She she's plays. Stunning. The woman was stunning. And I might go see this tonight. From Look. what I heard, she was a real gold digger, and she just was after him for his money, obviously. He owned a well, house course. in Brookville on Chicken Valley Road that was so fucking big that he, he, and he had so much money, he bought the house next door just to knock the house down to get the property. Uh, well, I, you know, I Arnold Schwarzenegger, you have to understand something. Out here, yeah. Arnold Schwarzenegger did that. He bought houses on either side of him in Beverly Hills. We're talking like, you know, Eight nine million dollar homes oh, yeah. on either side of him. Yeah, but Knock that, them down. We're talking about a thirty year old broker. Uh, right. You know, DiCaprio was forty. This kid was in his late twenties when he did this. Wow. You know, you yeah, they remember. started the movie. They started the movie and they showed him. You know, because DiCaprio can play can play really young. Yeah, right. Now but, the, but the but thing is about this actress, and I apologize, I don't have her name. The the thing is, is that uh, when I was a kid. Um, uh, my, my brother had a, a buddy, and he would always date in Louisiana these gorgeous girls that were somehow in these beauty contests and all. And one night, my brother says, hey, uh, Billy's bringing over. He's dating uh, Miss Louisiana. I went, oh, my God. So he, we have a very ugly accent in Louisiana, very ugly. And she was from across the river, the West Bank. She comes in. She's stunningly gorgeous. And we and, and uh, you know Billy says you know this is uh, uh, Tim and this is John and she goes oh hi how are you pleasure to meet like that and it was so awful the the accent was so awful and she could not get rid of it and she was beautiful and you you've met in the movie Kevin that's what happens she's gorgeous and then she opens her mouth mm -hmm. and you realize that she's you know from you know I don't know what Long Island or whatever. Australia. Well, she'll work forever. She'll work forever. She's the other, just a real other quick thing. The drug dealer, uh, you know, that muscle guy, him and Jordan used to meet in parking lots on Long Island. They would, one would be in a Rolls Royce, one would be in a limo. They would exchange a million dollars in cash. This guy. That's in the movie. No, no, that's in, but that's in the movie. That's in yeah, the movie. his real name was Todd Garrett, and I was very good friends. That's with in the Todd. movie. His name is Todd, and that's in the movie. Yeah, he died at 35 years old. He died of a heart attack. 
All of that's in the movie. Kevin, you've got yeah. well, Kevin, you've got to see I'm the amount of see drugs. This. Yeah. They put out they they put out a, a pile of drugs, a pile of I, I turned to my brother yeah. and I said, Oh, these oh, piles of cocaine. You know, you were always no. you, know, you ever hear that you know, oh you should have been at this party, there's piles of cocaine. I've no. never been to a party with piles of cocaine, ever. This is piles of cocaine. If you took all of the tissues out of a Kleenex box and you piled them up, that's what kind of we're talking about. Mm -hmm. My brother yeah, said they, they that's that's a hundred thousand dollars of coke on that table. More. That's what he said. They, 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 rumor has it, they used to meet in parking lots with million dollars in cash and exchange. Uh, this guy, Todd, was a drug addict, a drug dealer from the time we were in high school. And uh, the whole story... Oh, you knew the, Todd oh, when you were in high school? I knew Todd. I, it was Bay Terrace. We lived you know what, school. Mike? You know what's so crazy? You'll never do it. But it, if you wrote the real story as the next door neighbor, that book would sell. Maybe I don't yeah, know. Yeah, do oh, I'm I'll telling wind, you, wind, people wind, love. Wind, listen, we 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 don't know we don't know you from Adam, and we're all listening to it. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's well, I'm telling that this whole story with the boat that was Coco Chanel's boat that he. Bought. Why don't you go and, and start going on some talk shows? Tell them the real story. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because because everybody in Bay Terrace that grew up knows this guy, know the whole story. So we what? We used to talk about it. You know, this guy would drive around in different colored Lamborghinis and Ferraris, uh, and the real fun story. I ran into him in 19, you could look it up, it was 19, uh, uh, 19, let me try to think right, 1998, it was September. I saw him in the Blockbuster video in Brookville, and this is fact, you can look it up. I love I this. saw him, I said, I hey, it. Jordan, how you doing? He's with his daughter. She goes back to his house, and the FBI is waiting for him, and that's when they arrested him. So, as he saw me last, which wasn't the best thing for him, I guess my luck didn't play well with him. But, um, he, um... Uh, I, you know, it, most everything you saw in the movie was accurate. These guys. Now, I'm going to tell. I'm going to tell you a story from the movie that happened to me when I was all drugged up with my surgery and stuff. Remember, I told you, Kevin and everybody, that I was taking oxycotton and Vicodins and everything else, mm -hmm. and I thought that my behavior was wonderful. I I I envisioned myself as being really sweet and uh, listening to everyone. In reality, my wife and son said to me, you know, you were really being terrible to everybody and rude and ordering us around and yelling at people. And I said, no, no. In the movie, Leonardo DiCaprio takes some quaaludes that are old. They're oh, like okay. seven or eight years old. Oh, those. They were called 715s. Those were what they kept taking them. I've, I've only had one 715 in my... No, no. I gave a 715 to my girlfriend, and before the meal was over, she fell face first into her plate. <laughs> and I'm not kidding. <laughs> and I had to lift her head and, and, and make her head move in the way, and pretend that when she was answering the waiter. I'm not joking. Yeah. Um, 714s, I think they were. So... He takes handfuls of them, and then he goes to use a telephone. It is the funniest scene, Kevin, you'll ever mm -hmm. see an actor do. He he becomes paralyzed by the um, um, quaaludes, mm -hmm. but he must get must get home. It takes him five minutes to crawl from a payphone to what is that? A Lamborghini in the movie? It's something. Right, some well, unbelievable. He, he had to go. He had to go from the Brookville Country Club, which was about a mile down Chicken Valley Road in Brookville, to his house. From his house, about a mile. Kevin, you, could, you, could walk you cannot believe the physical humor mm -hmm. of Leonardo DiCaprio, and oh, and perfect. Judd, uh, uh, um, uh, what's it? Jonah Hill is back at the house. Mm -hmm. The Quaaludes hit him back at the house, and both of them can't talk. It's hysterical. But he he in the voiceover he says, you know what's amazing is I was able to drive that mile back to my house without do, without getting a ticket, mm -hmm. without touching a car or anything. And, and in the driveway, he looks back and he sees his Lamborghini is perfect. The cops well, you come know, to the, the house. Real disturbing thing is oh, wait a second, Mike, wait a second. What he really did, Kevin? He crashed into 20 cars on the way home. <laughs> and, he, and, and he crashed into golf carts and he crashed into... Yes, and the cops handcuff him, and, and you walk out, and now his Lamborghini, it looks like a tin can all crunched yeah. up. And I looked at that, and I said to my brother, that's me. That's what I was like. I had yeah, no I, idea. I did Quaaludes once, and I think I only took a half of one, 
and I told my best friend everything everything that was wrong with him. You know, of course. You know, I just I just read him the riot act. I just remember telling him how what a horrible person. Well, was. if you didn't know you were gay before, you should have known. Then only gay guys but, do but, stuff you like know, that. You know, mm -hmm. he wrecked people's lives. He owes the judgment against him was a hundred and ten million dollars. I don't know how he's making that restitution now, but he claims mm -hmm. he's not making any money off the movie or the book, which is bullshit. Now, Mike, what do you do for a living? Uh, hmm? I'm in the I'm in I'm in the staffing business. The what? Staffing. 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 You know, temporary. Yeah. You know, it's a so temporary. Everybody knows, so everybody knows kind of where I am now. But, all uh, right. so That's he, all right. he, he owes over a hundred million dollars to people he's ruined their lives. And mm -hmm. he claims he's not making any money from the book, but I could guarantee you this guy has a stash of money set aside somewhere to live on. There's I mean, never a movie about the next door neighbor of of the star of the star of the movie, <laughs> you know, it's like Monty Python, you know, no, the, we the guy that lived next door to Christ, you know, when they did. Uh, what's the, the movie nice they did? Kid. What's Life of Brian? Kid is Life of Brian. Life, he lived next door to Jesus. Remember, he lived yeah. like down the block or something. You know, Just, uh, amazing stuff. I mean, the, the movie wow. is so accurate. Now, how old of a man are you, Mike? I'm fifty-two. I'm George's okay. age. Okay, all right. Yeah. Well, Mike, I tell you, you you are a compelling um, uh, a talker, and I uh, appreciate it. Thank you very much, Mike. And I mean no that. Problem. There's something I'm there. That's you. that's crazy stuff. Thank you, Mike. Thank All right, you. take care, guys. Bye. Thanks. They're not just having fun though in the movie. I mean, it's like. Uh, did you get a screener so, of it, Jay, or did you go to the movie theater? I got a screener of yeah. it. Yeah. Okay. By the way, I also saw her. Mm -hmm. with um, a Joaquin Phoenix. It's unbelievable. It's so good. And, and uh, you can't pull. In fact, you think, oh, how can that be? He falls in love with the woman in the computer. It's unbelievable. It's so good. Mm -hmm. Here's the sad part. They used another woman, uh, and she did the entire movie. Her name was Samantha. She was an, uh, an Irish actress. She did the entire movie and was on the set every day, and he was he was playing to her. Mm-hmm. And then they replaced her, they replaced her with yeah. Scarlett Johansson yeah. and still kept the name Samantha, I guess, as a tribute to her. And Scarlett Johansson does a great job. But uh, Joaquin Phoenix, who was a really unusual actor, I didn't like the movie The Master, but I thought his performance was fabulous. Uh, her is great. There are so many good movies out there. Um, Saving Mr. Banks about Walt Disney and the woman that wrote um, Mary Poppins is yeah. fantastic. Um, Captain Phillips. Is really good, also Tom Hanks. Um, uh, uh, the Meryl Streep and I hear that's unbelievable. I hear that's this unbelievable. is one of those years Julie where there Morris. are just tons, tons of great movies. Nebraska, tons. I hear that's wonderful. With you Bruce hear that's Darren. good. I, you know, I, 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 you do, know, I, I do hear know. that's good. Yeah. You know, one time I got a thing in the mail years ago and thought I'd won a million dollars. You know, people laugh at that, mm -hmm. and the way it was worded. It seemed like I'd won money, and that's what the premise of Nebraska is. The old guy thinks he won a million bucks. Yeah. So. Remember when you got a magazine and you thought you won the grand prize because it yes. had your name typed in the magazine, but then you yes. realize that they had it from your subscription or whatever? Yes. So yes. <laughs> yes, I thought I'd won something. You know, I try out so for sad, all those. It, <laughs> no, th listen. <laughs> For the last 10 years, I have bought three to four of these raffle tickets for the million dollar house. What are the, now it's a three million dollar house. Southern California, uh, the Bay Area, San Francisco, and Santa Barbara, California. What they do is they get a house and I'm not going to keep the house. I'm going to take the money, right? And they're, they're only 1500, um, prizes. They're 1500 prizes and there's 50,000 people that they allow to buy tickets. It's a limited amount. So I buy four or five for 150 apiece, and there are 1,500 uh, prizes. Some of them are ice chest, you know, or whatever. I've never won a swizzle stick, an ice chest, a head cover, nothing. I've won nothing ever. And, and just the other day. dollars on each ticket, so it's like yes, $600? $600. 600 bucks. Oh. Yeah, every year. Now, it's charity, so you can write it off, but but you would think I'd win something. And and when I see the person that won, you know, it's usually not an American, an original American, uh, and that really that makes me mad. Me. Von not an American. 
you know what? Van, first of all, it's usually Tran, T-R-A-H-N. And I go, Jesus Christ. A Vietnamese fisherman won. You know, he doesn't need it. I need it. Oh, and I got such plans. Remember, I win that thing. Oh, my God. I got speeches I'll be giving for hours. <laughs> Hello? Hello? You know who this is? No, who is this? It's Jay fucking Thomas. That's who it is. Really? Yeah. I just won $3 million in this uh, raffle thing. Really? Yeah. <laughs> I just call to tell you to go fuck yourself. Okay? Just thought I'd give you a call. <laughs> you know, to go fuck yourself. And you would do this like eight hours a day? You would just call people up? You see the chair you're, you're sitting in? Between yeah. him sending dead chicken carcass and bones. Take that mm-hmm. chair and just, and, and because you're the biggest asshole I know, and <laughs> shove it up your ass. Nice. All right? Okay, hey, what? What do, you, what do you mean by, what do I mean by this, you evil prick? <laughs> oh, yeah, I'd be on the phone all day. <laughs> How was your day? day? Great. Had a great day. Oh, I would have a good time. You know, um, uh, once, years ago, I would blame really big people for, for holding my career back, like the presidents of networks and stuff. And a therapist said to me, she goes, you know, Jay, um, many times when a person... <laughs> blames people that are that are really kind of in the stratosphere who may not even realize that they've done anything to you nor have they made a decision based on you personally it gives the person that is complaining greater um weight in their own minds and i thought yeah the president of a network probably never personally went out of their way to you know but in your mind, it, you know. Yeah, it makes you a it, big deal. It it makes more sense, yeah. Yeah, I mean, the biggest thing I ever lost was David Letterman signed me to a, a big contract and uh, was going to put me on the air and I was going to do all my stories, my mother, my life, and everything else, uh, a comedy, a, a sitcom. And we had huge meetings. And we were just about to sign the deal. And uh, Les Moonves became the president of CBS, or was the president, and I'd been on Love and War and Murphy Brown and another couple of shows. And he said to Letterman, he says, look, I think Jay's a really good actor. I just don't think he's a star. And that was the end of the deal. So in that way, yeah, he would. And, and you know, Les was always nice to me and said hello to me. And I saw him on, you know, trips and stuff. I'd see him mm-hmm. places. But but that and then and then they signed Ray Romano. Right. I know. I know. Now, would my show have been as big? No, I have no idea. I don't know. I didn't do it. I have no idea. But boy, the meetings, Kevin, in the Beverly Hills Hotel and the, oh my God, you just saw the fucking meatball sitting there. You mm-hmm. saw the big fucking meatball. Oh my God. And then when they get the word that the network's not interested, no one calls you back. No one. Well, so and you finally, couldn't, have, Letterman you had couldn't to, have put it on a, a cable network. You know what? I think that that his deal was strictly with CBS, yeah. and that he really didn't have anything on the air yet, yeah. and um, he didn't fight for me. He didn't go in there and say, "Well, we're doing it anyway." Right. Um, and I, I guess they figured, you know, Ray Romano. Do you think was, that's why he a, had you on every year? As you know, no, no. I told him I'd never be in a show again. I, I told the producer, I said, well, look, you know what? Um, uh, I'll never go back on the show. I tell you, we are so much alike that way because something like that would happen to me, and I would go, yep, that's it. I'll never going to talk to you again. That's it. I'll never so, go. I'll um, never do your show again, ever. And, ever. and not a lot was happening. Now, I'll tell you what happened. CBS sent me a movie of the week with a check attached to it. I'm not joking. And I did a big movie of the week um, uh, with... Um, um, who was who was the woman from Who's the Boss, Christina? You know the the, oh, the woman Julie. Judith Light. Judith Light. Yeah, Judith Light. I did a huge movie of the week with her, and they paid me a ton of money. And that was kind of weird. Was that, that when happened. you were in the wheelchair? Yeah, that was a big movie. And, <laughs> I yeah, remember. Yeah, uh, husband, wife, lover. Mm-hmm. So you know, Moonves had to write off on that. Um, and so I'm sitting at home one day, and um, Letterman calls me. And remember, he never speaks to anybody. And I uh, go, hello. And he goes, look, I just wanted you to know that it was poorly handled and the buck stops with me and it's my problem and I can't blame it on my producers or the writers or whatever. 
and I just wanted to tell you that 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 um, I should have handled it differently, and this and that and the other. I said, okay, I really appreciate you calling and everything else, but um, I, I didn't think you really fought for me, and I didn't think you really uh, went out of your way to, you know, uh, and you were correct to sign me. And I said, I just don't think I'm I'm comfortable enough to to sit next to you on TV and, and act <laughs> like everything is okay. And he says, well, I hope you change your mind. I hope you change your mind. And I'm sorry that it happened. And I'm not calling because I want you to do the show. I'm, I'm just calling because, you know, I know you're upset. So he was very nice about it. It's very, very uptight. Mm -hmm. So I try and make it a little less tense. And I said, well, you know, the worst part of this, Dave, is this has really screwed up my putting. And he goes, what? I said, it's really messed up my my golf game. And for that, I'm really upset like that. And he didn't laugh. He didn't do anything. And so we hung up. And I think a couple of months later, my publicist just kept calling me and going, look, you know, they really want you back. And I went, well, yeah, what the fuck? So I started going. But that was before the Lone Ranger story or anything. That was... That was long before I told that story. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's devastating, horrible. You, you know, you think, you know, and then you know the friggin' you know Ray Romano shows the biggest show on television. Did you ever watch that? Loved it. Thought it was hysterical. Yeah. Yeah. Didn't you? Yeah, I did love it. Yeah. And I knew Doris very well, mm -hmm. the woman that played the mother. I knew her. You dated for years. her, didn't you? I went out with her. <laughs> For a long time. <laughs> <laughs> Who played the dad? I used to hang out with him all the time too. Uh, what's his name? Peter Boyle. Peter, Peter Boyle. Peter Boyle. He was the great. He was a yeah. great. He was a great guy. We did the, we did the Santa Claus movies together. He played Father Time, and I was the Easter Bunny. We're all dressed up in these ridiculous outfits and everything else. And he says, you know, you think if we smoke a joint, we'll light our our fake beards on fire? I said, well, the Easter Bunny, I'll go up like a goddamn Christmas tree if you if I light a joint over here. Uh, and, and, um, um, now, Kevin Steve, Pollack. Stephen Leo wrote that, uh, the Santa Claus, right? I don't know the writers. Yeah, there's na they're a comedy team. Their name is Stephen Leo. And, well, they uh, did great. They did, there was funny yeah, stuff. Yeah, they, great they, stuff. Yeah, they did great. And, and, and Kevin Pollack played, um, Cupid. Uh huh. And he's wearing a diaper. So, he comes into my dressing room. <laughs> He's sitting there in a diaper. I'm in the Easter Bunny costume because I can't take it off, mm -hmm. and we're on break. And I'm trying to eat something. And they're all and smoking. The foods... No, we didn't smoke. No, we didn't smoke in our outfits. We didn't... <laughs> uh, let's go to Lance of New Paul's, New York. Yes, Lance, oh. go ahead. Yeah, I like New Paul's. Uh, no, no, the one up top. The one up top. Yeah, go ahead. Yes, go ahead, Lance. Yeah, we're here. One of the first scenes of Wolf of Wall Street is uh, him sitting in front of that uh, hooker, and he's he's blowing cocaine in her ass. I was wondering if <laughs> right. you've ever done that, or if Kevin, no. Kevin, have you ever done that? Have I ever? No, my brother did it. My no. brother, uh, my brother was into that because he said they, that's what they wanted. Because it what it they want them... the the cocaine in their ass because it makes them high faster. I was, I was never with it. Liza, you know. Yeah. Makes them high. And also, uh, if they're going to do anal, it uh, deadens the sphincter. Oh. Numbs it right up. Yeah. Kevin, you never did Can't that. believe Fox. No, never did that. Can't they believe Fox that. didn't want me to do a show for him after this kind of you know material <laughs> that we're doing here. Can't believe it. All right, Lance. No, I've never done that. Somebody once wanted me to do, you want to do coke off my ass? I didn't quite understand how you did it, where it was supposed yeah. to be done. I didn't. I, I, I don't was know trying to get that. my wife to do that on uh, New Year's Eve. Oh, this yeah, past New Year's you know, Eve? Yeah, you know what ruins that? The word wife, okay? Yeah. Um, I, I know that, Jack. You know what the word wife means in Latin? I'm never going to blow you or really fuck you good again. That's what it means in Latin. Wife. Yeah, baby. Yeah. I mean, they all fuck you every now and again, but, you know. That's just to keep you quiet. I wanted to have sex with my wife recently. She says, I'm afraid you have too much, too many drugs in you. Oh, my God. What? <laughs> that my sperm would be like him because I took all these drugs and she wants the yeah, drugs to drain out of my body. Alta. What about the, it can go on the reservoir, the condominium. <laughs> I should go buy a condom, right. Oh. And how much is buy. that? How many? Ten cc's. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. Yes. Ten cc's will just come like, out. Just like the band. Yes. Yeah. yeah. That's like a loving booty call song. Mm -hmm. All right. 
Uh, let's go to Mitch, who's in Winnipeg. Uh, yes, Mitch, what is the temperature in Celsius right now in Winnipeg? And then Garrett Andritz will tell us what it is immediately in Fahrenheit. Uh, Mitch, what is the Ooh. Celsius temp, the centigrade temperature? It's rich, but I'm not going to hold it against you. It's, uh, it's about minus 35, I think. Hold on. But we're just, we're All right, Garrett. It's, hold it. Hold it. Don't say anything okay, else, Rich. Okay, okay. It's minus 35. Garrett, what is that in uh, in Fahrenheit, please? 165 divided by 9 oh, is... Yeah. What is he doing? Well, minus 40 is minus 40. That's the... Uh, Will you be quiet? It's about... Please, Rich. Oh. It's about like minus 18, minus 19? No, it's, it's probably like about minus 32 Fahrenheit or something like that. Well, how are we supposed to take Wait, your word for no, it? No, no. You're yeah, up there. You take minus 35. You said you it was add, minus. Yeah. You take minus 35. You add 32. So that gives you minus 3. Um, and you multiply minus 3 by uh, 5 <laughs> No nights, better way to right? no, you do the multiplying out of first. 9 times 3 is uh, minus 27. Oh, God. I'm going to kill myself. I don't know what it is. I could I could be here all night. Uh, I know what it is. It's know. cold. What is it? That's what it is. It's very, very cold. It's actually cold. warming up here. It was a lot worse. It was my All right. You know what, Rich? You know what? You're kind of a boring guy to begin with. Don't, you know, don't ruin it. Uh, what did you call about? What did you call about? I called about sticking shit up your ass. There's a sound. Get rid of him. Get completely rid of him. <laughs> idiot. Stupid. But idiot. thanks for the temperature. <laughs> I called about sticking things up my ass. <laughs> the Get temperature up my ass. Get rid of, we don't want to talk about that. Uh, in uh, Pottawatomie <laughs> County, where is Pottawatomie County? Is that in? Um, sounds like. Is that yeah. Oklahoma? That's Oklahoma. It sounds definitely Brad like Davis. Tennessee or something. Brad Davis, a former Marine, it is charged with killing his stepfather <laughs> with an atomic wedgie. Uh, the former Marine faces first-degree murder charges. Uh, he killed his stepfather with underwear. The 33-year-old Brad Davis suffocated his stepfather during uh, uh, the days before Christmas. Mm -hmm. Both men were drinking at home, and um, no, kidding. Davis's stepfather spoke ill of Davis's mother. Mm. Uh, Davis claims the stepfather swung first, and then Davis fought back, giving his uh, stepfather an atomic wedgie and somehow pulling his underwear on, off of him. On must the have head. Been in their underwear. You pull them onto the head then, the atomic wedgie, right? Yes. Yes. Up and over. The asphyxiation was caused by the elastic underwear band being stretched over his head mm -hmm. and then left around his neck. <laughs> uh, Davis called 911 after the fight and said, uh, my, my stepfather has underwear in his head and he's not breathing. <laughs> 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 wonder if they buried him like that. He had an open casket. <laughs> Sheriff Mike Booth. <laughs> Sheriff Mike Booth is quoted as saying, "We are continuing our investigation, and now we've uncovered evidence that led us to believe that this was more than just a fight." <laughs> I don't know what what that means. Okay, stay where you are. The show is just beginning. We'll have Mark DiCarlo here uh, later on. You probably never even heard of the guy, but he's a nice fellow. And then we'll have a comedian, Vic Henley, who's a big uh, Auburn fan and went to the game and, and, you know, they lost the game and all that stuff. So that's what's happening today. Stay where you are. Jay Thomas. The Jay Thomas Show. It's the afternoon show. Serious XM 104. The Jay Thomas Show. Indeed. Serious XM 104. So the director, Michael Bay, they're having the big um, um, computer, you know, what? What do they call that thing in Vegas? You know, it's a big event. CES. Yeah, but it's about, you know, all the new computer stuff. There's a there's a camera. You can see people at the front door. You can, you know, it's all this crazy, crazy yeah. crap, right? Um, that just breaks. Um, so Michael Bay, uh, who's sold over $2 billion in movie tickets, and uh, is a big, tall, handsome guy. Transformers, you know, he did The Rock, he did um, Armageddon and all this. They pay him millions of dollars to talk about the new Samsung television, this kind of concave uh, screen or whatever. And he comes out, and um, they ask him about what it's like to be a director. And so, you know, you'd, you'd figure he could talk from his heart about that or whatever. 
but he's reading from a teleprompter. And in the middle of this, the teleprompter starts acting up. This is Michael Bay. He, and I think trans, another Transformers coming out. This, this, this guy's worth, you know, probably four or five, four hundred million dollars, whatever it is. And, um, he, he, he panics. Well, let's listen. Michael Bay. <laughs> Uh, my job as a director is I get to dream for a living. Michael, you know, you're known for such unbelievable action. What, what inspires you? What, how do you come up with these unbelievable ideas? Uh, I create visual worlds that are so beyond every, everyone's normal life experiences. And Hollywood is a place that creates uh, a viewer escape. Mm -hmm. And um, what I try to do is I, as a director, I try to... What is that? Oh, God. Oh. The type is all off, sorry, but I'll just wing this. <laughs> Tell us what you think. Yeah. But we'll, just, we'll, we'll wing it right now. Um, I, take, I try to take people on an emotional ride. And, um. The curve? How, is it, uh, how do you think it's going to impact uh, how viewers experience TV. movies? Excuse me, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, awesome. let's thank Michael Bay for joining us. Oh, that's so hilarious. <laughs> oh, man. The Jay Thomas Show. We make you feel better about yourself. It's the Jay Thomas Show. Afternoon. Afternoon. Serious XM 104. That tour ended in uh, Columbia, South Carolina, right? So I was doing a show at the University of South Carolina. They're the Gamecocks. That's what they are, the Viking Roosters, the Gamecocks. That's their mascot, right? And except nothing in, in anywhere in the state of South Carolina says Gamecocks on it. Everything just says Cocks. Exactly. Thank you, smart people. Go Cocks. They still, they still put the little rooster like next to it where the Baptists don't get nervous. <laughs> Just in case there's some fucking jackass going on. They're the penises? They're the pen They're really the penises? Oh, no, I see the rooster. They're the game pots. Okay, that's all right. So I'm, I'm there, uh, I'm there for homecoming, and, uh, I know they're the cops. I'm an SEC guy. And, uh, what I did not know is that homecoming week, collectively, the entire week, has its own name. Okay? And they do a different event every night leading up to the big football game on, on Saturday. So I'm there for the Wednesday night comedy show in the middle of all the festivities. My show's over. I'm in the back of the room talking to some students, signing whatever they ask me to. And this guy walks up to me and he's like, hey, dude, that was really funny. Are you, are you sticking around for all of Cop Fest? I'm like, uh, I went to Red Lobster once for a lobster fest. That was all the lobster I could eat for $11.99. So, no. They gave me a t-shirt for doing that show. And a check. Uh, they gave me a t-shirt, and, and I accidentally wore it on Gay Pride Weekend in New York City once. Yeah, I, I, yeah no shit, really. I, I, uh, I worked late Saturday night, way late, and slept way past noon or whenever the next day. So by that time, the Gay Pride Parade had ended in New York City, and all the gay people were just flying around Manhattan like Tinkerbell. <laughs> it's a wonderful time. You should go and see it. It's fabulous. And uh, I just woke up and was going to get, get coffee, and I grabbed the first T-shirt off the stack and just threw it on and had no idea. And I hit the sidewalk, and about ten seconds later, from every direction, I started hearing, Hi! Hi! I'm like, oh, fuck, I'm wearing the cock shirt. I don't give up. So anyway, we went dancing. So we'll be talking to Vic Henley. I don't, I don't know him. God, he's funny. Um, uh, oh, Vic's been around uh, for years. I just did it. We worked together just uh, a couple of weeks ago at the Comedy Cellar. Oh God! I, you, know, you know what? What's great about him is you know, and, and this is because you guys have been doing it so long, 
He sounds like he's just talking, you know? Yes, absolutely. You know, you're hanging around for Cockfest, you know, oh, my God. He's you know, part of the, uh, all you can eat. Um, yeah. the Jeff Foxworthy, you know, while you're a yeah. redneck. He wrote mm -hmm. all those. He, Blue Collar, yeah. Blue collar. yeah. He was part of that whole team, yeah. He sounds like um, Jeff Foxworthy. A little bit. That's yeah. what I thought you were playing. I think playing. he sounds a little a little smarter than Jeff Fox. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't mean that in a bad way. He just seems... But you know uh, what? I think I think Jeff is a real, uh, is a very conservative um, religious guy. Yeah. And I... I really don't you know, know him I, that well, but I... I, I Vic, think Vic po isn't. politics wise, I think politics wise, <laughs> we, uh, we would not, um, we would not get along. Yeah. Um, you know, um, no, not that he's a racist or anything like that. I just don't, you know. I, I have, Nick, on the other I have, hand, is a, you know, he's been out of the South for, you know, since the '80s. He's lived here in New York. Yeah, like you know. on the Upper East Side or something yes. like that. Is that true? <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. So he sounds like he's from down south, mm -hmm. you know, but he's very he, liberal. He really oh, is yeah. a New Yorker at heart. You think he's yeah. a liberal? Oh, absolutely. Oh yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Really? Yeah. Well, yeah. ask him when he comes on. He's a blast. I, I saw. A no, no, no. Jeff Foxworthy. No, no, no. Oh, no, no, no. Jeff. Oh. Oh. Jeff Foxworthy. Yeah. No. Yeah. No. Jeff, he's Jeff Foxworthy. No. Yeah. He, he's not a liberal. No, no yeah, I don't think so. That Bible game show, or whatever. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what you guys were which talking is a, about. Which is a great idea. God, that's a fantastic idea. Is that still yeah. going? I'm not sure. Yeah, but that, that's, I don't a, know. that's a good idea. You know, I don't. I don't. That's as good of an idea as knock him off the top of the mountain. You know, mm -hmm. <laughs> I love that idea. I got Is it still freezing? Show. Is it still freezing? Back yes, it's twenty degrees here. Do you know how cold it is? How cold is it? <laughs> <laughs> it's so cold. Lawyers have their hands in their own pockets. Oh, <laughs> I love these. Oh, boy. <laughs> it's so cold. The cops, when they're chasing a bad guy, they yell, "Thaw! Thaw!" And how much do, how much a month do you pay for the service? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it's so bad. <laughs> oh! <laughs> Good stuff, though. Good stuff. So cold, I saw a lawn jockey asking for a blanket. A lawn jockey? <laughs> <laughs> wow, he's really thing. cracking himself up back there. <laughs> you don't see many lawn jockeys anymore, do no. you? Mm. <laughs> oh boy! Uh, it is uh, so cold that people are doing very stupid things, and they're dying because of it. Uh, in in Luc de Flambeau, Wisconsin, <laughs> a woman escaped injury. Uh, she decided to heat up her vehicle. How did she decide by to putting do that? a mound of hot coals mm -hmm. under her <laughs> engine block? It's wrong with people. Her 2007 Dodge Caravan, hoping to warm up the engine chamber. Mm -hmm. So she started the coals in a, uh, you know, a little, uh, one of those little, you know, aluminum uh, barbecue, you yeah. know, yeah, whatever it is. And she pushed the thing under the car. Mm -hmm. And, of course, um, it ignited pretty quickly. Because uh, gasoline, oil. Well, yeah, oil. yeah, yeah. It ignited uh, pretty fast. Uh, in uh, Frankfort, Kentucky, a guy escaped, a, a robber escaped from prison. Robert Vick uh, then came back to the prison and said, I, I want to turn myself in. It's too cold. <laughs> came back and... Any relation to Michael Vick? Maybe. <laughs> no. I want to turn myself in. Uh, I don't think uh, the Redskins, uh, for those of you wondering, uh, they may in fact have to change their name. You have to go in front of the U.S. Patent and Trademark Office uh, to, to, I guess, re-register your name. And so, why would um, they have to re-register their name? I, I, I don't know, but um, Redskins hog rinds, which were, you know, you know what um, pork rinds? Yeah, you know what pork rinds are. Sure, you know what those are. Yeah. Well, there was a company in our president Redskins. used to eat them all the time. Yeah, there was these, the Redskins hog rinds was going to be sold at the stadium, and, and a company made them. And they 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 refused the trademark. Isn't that wild? Mm. So they're saying that this is a precursor, which I think is the stupidest thing in the world. Uh, Amanda Blackhorse is leading a group. She's an American, Native American. You know, I don't know. I, I um over Christmas I, I, I saw Planners Redskins peanuts. Oh, you did. 
because it not, had nothing to do with the team, but they had the skin on them, and they were called red skin peanuts. I think I've seen really? some red skin products out there. But have nothing to do with Indians? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Josh says, Jay, it's so cold uh, here in Wisconsin. I just saw a snowman breaking into a home. <laughs> Why would he do that? Because it's so cold? But he's he a snowman. Yeah. But he needs, uh -huh. if it's warm, he dies. <laughs> Uh, George says, Jay, it it's so cold. Jay, it's so cold. Uh, I heard that there's a flasher that just is describing himself to women. <laughs> Brad Burger. <clears throat> He's describing himself. <laughs> you know, I think you guys, you must go, whatever Jay says, don't laugh. You know, they did that to me in high school. Whatever Jay says, don't laugh. You know? I'm not a big joke guy. Joke yeah, guy? Yeah, me neither. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I never really? Happened. No. Well, you know who is a big joke? The people. Yeah. Well, give give us so, another one. What? Give, give well, us another one. Well, it's so cold, I feel like going out to McDonald's and just spilling coffee on my legs. <laughs> 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 I made that one up. I just thought of it. <laughs> That. that was great. I tell you, Jay, you got a million of them. I tell you, else. Oh, you didn't like it? I thought you. I thought it really made you laugh. Now that hurt my feelings. Oh, I thought you wanted us to laugh. That's why you gave us that cue. So cold that I just just <laughs> saw a report of a seal clubbing another seal just to get his coat. <laughs> <laughs> now, if we had well, a I real do like, morning, I do like club, uh, uh, clubbing seal jokes. Like if, we, if we had a real morning show or a real afternoon show on some terrestrial station, you, you know, they, they like there's a there's some show in L.A. called. Susie, Frosty, and Bobby are so they're the worst people, the worst announcers ever. They die laughing at their own shit. Because oh, I drive in I go in there scream. all the, yeah, I do all these radio I, shows. I scream the at country. the radio, you know. Um, it's so cold now, Kevin, that golden showers are now kind of a mainstream thing. <laughs> you liked that one, didn't you? I did. I li it's gay. They're getting bluer. Yeah. Yeah, well, because it's colder. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's so cold that spitting now requires a gun permit. Ooh. <laughs> Poor thing. Uh, you know, when I was a comic, uh, uh, 10 of my 20 minutes was me laughing at my own shit, you know, when I did... Did my twenty minutes? That's it. All right, I won't. You know, I, I won't. I won't. I won't make the listeners laugh anymore. Okay. But I just saw a report where a robber went inside of a bank and everybody in there was wearing a ski mask. <laughs> I tell you, this is these last couple of days, great yeah. days to rob a bank because everybody's going in there. You know, with going into the mm -hmm. bank with the. You know, with the the scarf yeah. around their face and everything, you just yeah. go in there, rob a bank. Now I'm going to have to ask you. you something, and this is a this is a, a gay a gay thing. Oh, ask the me. Canadian pop duo uh, Tegan and Sarah. Have you ever heard of them? They're a lesbian duo. Mm -hmm. You know them? I've, I've heard of them. Yes. Yeah. They are headlining the 24th Dinah Shore Weekend, which is the world's largest. Lesbian event. Why well, didn't know Dinah Shore, Shore was lesbian? No, I. Uh, well, I happened uh, when I first came to Hollywood. She had a television show. Oh, Rona my Barrett. Of course. Rona, Rona yeah. Barrett. Sure. Rona well, Dinah Shore had me on, and Rona Barrett had me on. This is you know, thirty something years ago, mm -hmm. and and Dinah Shore was dating uh, Burt Reynolds. Yes, at the time, the why hottest would, man in the world. Why would it be called the Dinah Shore Weekend? I've never heard she was gay. Have you? Kind of are I, they are they trying to out her and saying no, she I never think it was admitted because, to being gay? No, I think it's just turned into uh you know <clears throat> the uh a lesbian <clears throat> golf tournament, I think. That's what it's turned into. Well no, the the uh the, the Dinah Shore uh ladies golf thing, you know, there's uh, an inordinate amount of uh, women golfers that are, you know, lesbians. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, but um It coincides yeah. with the L P G A uh, tournament, oh. 
which Dinosaur founded. Right. And the LPGA goes out of its way to play down the lesbian thing. And so now, you know, I guess they just gave into it, right? Just over. There's been a crop um, of really hot women golfers lately. It's not, there are. Not Asian ones either. It used to be all Asians would win. And Annika Sorenstrom or whatever her name is. She's not lesbian, is she, Annika? I don't think so. No, she's hot. No, no, she's married with a couple of kids, yeah. but she's not so hot anymore. No, no, she kind of looks kind of, kind of like. Here's the weird thing, you know. Um, I hate that when you say, "Oh, they were, she's not hot anymore." She's probably still no, no. They were outside a lot. Listen, their skin just takes a beating, and she looks leathery. <laughs> I mean, you know, she just looks leathery, and they're big. They're not. They're I was not never a teeth. big sun guy. Never, no. never go in the sun. Orlando Bloom, who's really by here's another movie I would never watch. That whatever this friggin' Hobbit movie is, the the Aug or Naug or whatever, I got the screener for that. That thing was was great, except it's just a preview for the next movie. There's no end to it. What the Hobbit? The the, the end of the movie comes, and this horrifying thing is about to happen, and the screen goes black. That's how the first one ended. Well, guess what? That's like how this one is. dragon opens its eye or something. And it, there's That's no exactly what, except the fucking dragon is loose. I remember we read and, The Hobbit in, yeah. like, fifth grade or sixth grade. Uh, well, The I Hobbit's only, like, shit. 50 pages. It's not a very long story. Oh, really? Really? Long in fifth grade. Three-hour. See, Christine three and I, you and I would have read that, 50 pages. Mm -hmm. We'd have done that in an hour or two. I believe Orlando it. Bloom was very good in it. And Miranda Kerr, do you know her, Christina? Yes. Uh, she's a, well, um, I don't know her. But... Uh, you know who she is? She's a, a model uh, who, and, and they're she breaking up. after. baby. Well, they're breaking up after three years, and here's what he says. Mm. Her fondness for Justin Bieber Ew. is too much for me to take. What? They have a little, a little boy named Flynn. Mm -hmm. uh, they blame their busy careers, but... He says that she plays Justin Bieber all the time, and it's become a real issue in our marriage. Wow. Isn't that That's crazy? crazy? It's creepy. She taught their little boy Bieber fever and even partied with Justin Bieber after a fashion show. Um, and Orlando thought there might be some flirting going on, and apparently this woman is just, you know, nuts for this, so for this guy. Orlando Bloom's marriage is over yeah. because of mm -hmm. Justin Bieber and Bieber fever. Well, no, I'm sure because she's stupid as a stick. I think he married Bieber, a model. Bieber fever, yeah. He married a model. Yeah, right. Eventually that, about that gets Victor boring, huh? Does it get boring? I said eventually it gets boring. It, it, you know, I mean, you know, it's like it's like Ian Ziering, uh, who I knew for a long time. He married this really nice and gorgeous, gorgeous girl that was in Playboy all the time. <laughs> And I would see him all the time at what we used to, you know, Kevin, you used to go to him. We call it trash sports events, right? With skiing and mm -hmm. outdoor stuff and, and right. the cable would run them. And I would host them and stuff like that. And oh God, you know, Peter Fonda, uh, would be this when I smoked dope with Peter Fonda, Cheech and, uh, Pat O'Brien. We're all smoking dope together in a hotel room. And I thought, this is fucking fabulous. Yeah. Right. And, um, and, and, you know, the 90210 stars would be there and the, the friends people would come and all that and, and they would ski. And it, it gave you all this incredible, you know, hotel rooms and everything. Baskets of stuff you would be able oh, to bring God, home. Oh, God. Just, oh, yeah. God. Just, so Ian Ziering from 90210 is married to this adorable girl. But, you know, she's an airhead and she's beyond gorgeous. And she's, and he's not a genius, but, you know, two or three years later, he dumps her and goes off with, you know, somebody else, another one. Yeah, they're really fine, but, you know, they're dumb, you know, and they have those, a lot of them have those little girl voices, you know, that Dr. Drew claims if a woman has a little girl voice, um, she's been molested. Oh, my he God. That. He used to do it all the time on um, Loveline, and, and he, what's weird about him is, is he would almost do it as a joke. So a girl would call up, and she'd talk like this, you know. She had a little girl voice, and and he would yeah, make a bet. Who were the other ho who were the who was the other host there? Oh, Garrett? that was the, the um, comedian. Yeah, um, he has a podcast you know, now. Be, you know, yeah, became you know the DJ and the comic. Um, really annoying. He was 
Adam. He was something. Rolla. Adam Carolla. Adam yeah. Yeah. Really. He annoying. would say Adam. Yes, he is really annoying. He's my favorite. Is he really? Oh yeah. He said Adam. Him. Adam. I who do you annoying. think did? <laughs> he would say Adam. Who do you think did it to her? Let me tell you who you and, did it to. And, and and Adam would say uh, her uncle, and then uh, Doctor Drew would say I think it was her brother, and then they'd go back to the girl and they would say who um. Who sexually molested you when you were a little girl? And the girl would go, My uncle. How'd you know that? <laughs> you know, and so, yeah. They so do it every time I hear a woman. Yeah, they still say it all the time. Yep. Horrible. Uh, by the way, um, I don't watch a lot of TV. You know, I'm a big Downton Abbey fan. I've heard. Hard, hard, I really am. New I mean, season it's started the, Sunday, two hours. I cried long. like a baby. I cried like a baby. <laughs> I wept. Do you think all the truckers are going back and forth from California to New York and their big trucks are yeah. pulling over to watch downtown? <laughs> no, Downton. 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 Down I'm sorry. What is it called? There's no ad. Downton. 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 Okay. And now my Thank wife you. watches nothing but oh, the no most w. vicious murder television shows. I'd be she really watches. really careful of her. The killing. She yeah. watches. Be careful. The following. Uh, she watches, um, you know, every, you know, victim show, you know, CSI, special victims unit, watches them all. So I, I, you know, come down and she's, you know, sitting in the bed, martini, just guzzling the martini every night, two or three martinis, guzzling them down. <laughs> Cats are surrounding her. And I go, hey, you want to come upstairs and watch Downton Abbey with me? She goes, you're kidding me, right? I don't know. <laughs> Meanwhile, you've got, you know, Maritza Hardigay is going, so how many times did he put mm -hmm. it into your rectum? <laughs> yes. Tonight, new episode, best script she's ever read. Can't wait. Mm. She's kidnapped, isn't she, or something? Didn't they well, she her? was, and now she's got to face the guy in court. I can't wait. <laughs> oh, yeah, my wife will be glued, mm -hmm. glued to the television, you know. So I've done a couple, two or three of those. And she says, you know, it always ruins it when you come on. <laughs> I saw one yesterday I, during my sickness with Cynthia Nixon and Balky. Yeah. Listen to him during my sickness. During his illness. <laughs> it's the SVU marathon. Yeah, every day. It's every the day. best day ever, every day. Yeah, during, during your illness, during your sickness. <laughs> You know, during your yeah. during your downtime. Like down uh, dear Jay, you guys have been trying to figure out um, uh, Celsius and Fahrenheit. Here it is. Oh God! For each thousand oh. feet of a of altitude gain, you lose two degrees Celsius, or three and a half degrees of Fahrenheit. You gain the same descending for each thousand feet. So there you go. And then Celsius and Fahrenheit meet at forty below zero. Hope that clears it up. <laughs> what? Clear it up. No, it just makes you know. my eyes roll in the back of my head. Celsius right. and Fahrenheit meet up at 40 below? 40 below zero, they meet. You know. So it's the same um, then at 40 below. It's 40 below Fahrenheit and 40 below Celsius? Yes. Yeah. Right, Garrett? Yeah. Really? Because <clears throat> five-ninths of 40 is eight, and then you add 32, I and that's 40. No, my head doesn't work like that. So, Christina, you I said everything, thing, do on, I do uh, everything on my fingers. That's how I do People are <laughs> pouring boiling water on their heads. No, uh, well, not that. on their heads. They're trying. They're throwing it out into the air. Yes, because and it becomes of how snow. Small, uh, how 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 um, cold it is, and it becomes snow. But everybody's hitting. Like <laughs> at least fifty people, I think, report, were reported where they had severe burns. <laughs> so they're throwing it into <laughs> the they're wind. Throwing it into the wind. <laughs> the wind blowing and in their face. Down what? <laughs> so you boil water. Yes. You walk out into the freezing uh, cold. Mm -hmm. Yes. And you it's got to go over the water. It's got to be. It at comes least 20, back to you. Twenty degrees below zero, right. at least. And, the, it, and you whip it into the air, and then it turns to snow right in front of your very eyes. But. All these people are reporting on Twitter about how they burn themselves severely. Yeah, that's great. You know, um, I wonder if anybody. My wife has a girlfriend from high school, and um, she hadn't seen her in years, and they got back together a few years ago. You know, on on Facebook or whatever. And she married a guy, and they live in Maine. I mean, you know, way away from a Maine town. And the, he he um, he has a job, and she has a job, but he only hunts elk, and and they eat. 
you know, whatever he kills, and they raise kids and everything else, and, and he fishes, and they, they just eat that. And it is so bad where they live right now that, that for weeks they can't leave their home and stuff like that. And, and he will not leave because he likes to, to hunt and fish. And it, and it happens every year. They get, I don't get it. I, I mean, to me, I don't know why anybody lives and be, oh, I love the four seasons. I mean, I, I lived through a lot of winters in New York and I could not wait to get out of there. I just, you know, I just couldn't. You know, when you came out here uh, to California, you, you saw what it was like, Christina. You know, it's, yeah, it's fantastic. You know, it's really cool. Jimmy yeah, Kimmel. Life. It's cold what? out there. No, what, but what Jimmy it's, Kimmel but it's still pleasant. He, uh, played some clips of all these weathermen oh, and women in California saying about how cold it's going to be. It's good getting down to 53 <laughs> degrees. And they were like having all these warnings about how to deal with it. It's, it's, oh, it's so hard. Well, you know what? Um, you know, here in like, Santa Barbara, it's been getting down to about 39, 40 degrees at night. Mm -hmm. And it's really cold. It's, it's just yeah, freezing. That is cold. We're not, we're not used to it. And another thing is this. There aren't a lot of fat people. In when you go to L.A. and and when you go, when you go to come to Santa Barbara, my brother said that you don't see any fat people. Everybody's jogging, working out, dieting, whatever. I mean, there are fatsos, but they don't live. They're in not allowed to my, go out. They don't live in my area, yeah. and so a lot of us don't have body fat. We don't have the body fat it takes to stay warm. Okay, that's what it is, and so we feel the cold. I'm cold all the time. All the time, I mean, I'm 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 freezing, and it's it's like sixty right now. I used to when I lived in California in Toluca Lake, when I first moved out there, and I was angry because I was not back in New You're York, angry. and I was I was just oh. mad, you know. I was like, I wanted to be back in New York, but I was living in California, so I would go to the uh, store in the morning, and it would be like you know forty degrees out, you know forty five degrees out, and I would see people. You know, walking or jogging, and they'd have mittens on and a scarf and a hat, and I'd get so pissed. I'd be in the car, take that fucking scarf off. It's not that cold, <laughs> idiot. And I would just get angry at people, you know. You, you don't need a scarf at 45 degrees, you know. But maybe Jay does. because When I moved out here, I didn't know that if a pedestrian puts their foot into the crosswalk, oh, yeah. everybody skids. Oh, oh I learned that, too. Oh, and yeah. and the, I, um, the things talk yeah. to you also out there. Mm -hmm. They tell you. I had the never, yeah, I had never, out. ever, um, you know, really driven out here that much. And so I move out here, and I'm driving like in Santa Monica, and I'm looking at the palm trees, and I'm getting it. And all of a sudden, I almost run this long-haired hippie guy. I almost run him down. It's like he's walking... And he gives me the bird. He starts yelling at me. So I drive another two or three blocks, and and they 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 go as slow as they can go across the street. That is the thing that they need to stop out here. It's the only city or the only state in the union where you gotta just they put their toe off the curb, and mm -hmm. I mean people skid and go sideways. It, I'm surprised more people aren't run. Well, they are. They're run down. They're run down all the time. But man, oh man, that's that's a real problem. You know, you're driving along, and the, you know, and especially the downtrodden. That's the most power they'll have all day. They get to stop traffic. It's all they got. They got their backpack. You know, they got you know whatever f shitty clothes they got from the mission. They walk really slowly across the street. And they're near the beach. <laughs> there would be a big sign. Homeless. The desert welcomes you. You know? Uh, let's go to John of Kentucky. Yes, John, it's Jay Thomas. Um, go ahead. Hey, man, what's going on? <laughs> Mom, we're very good. We're very man, good. I love them red skewed peanuts down here in Kentucky. Yeah. Go to the store, they come wrapped in a free blanket. <laughs> <laughs> it's so cold that I just got into a heated argument on purpose. <laughs> Jay, yeah. it's so cold that the homeless are huddled around Alex Bennett's career. 
See the stay warm, I think. Are you saying it's going down in flames? Is that? Oh, boy. (laughs) I don't know why that's funny, but that's funny. (laughs) All right. That may be All right. Uh, All right. See you, John. Let's go to Jeff of Pennsylvania. (laughs) Hello, Jeff. It's Jay Thomas. Go ahead, Jeff. Hey, Jay, you were talking the other day. There's some controversy about the, um, when you asked the guy about Ted Williams and the tuna can. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, but we did find out that it was his son, not his uh, step. John Henry, uh, his, John uh, Henry's his son, not his in-law. Yeah, the son, the son's the one, and now the son's dead, and he's his head's over there also. So, yes, <laughs> did he put his head the there too? Yeah, yeah, they're, they're both there. They're both there, and one's on a on a on a. Um, I think it's a. Um, it's a it's a chicken of the sea can. Okay, <laughs> is any of them on life support? Ted. That's Ted, and I believe his son's head is on like a generic brand. Now they have this thing where you know if you're brain dead, you're you're supposedly dead. You know, so they can hand out the death mm-hmm. certificate. There's this girl that mm-hmm. died just recently uh, when she was. Oh, they moved a, her body. No, they wanted to wake up. No, the no, the parents are praying over her. Yeah, they so to wake up. but she's yeah. the death certificate certificate has been issued and she's dead, but. Mm-hmm. They're saying, okay, well, you know, she's, I guess she's not dead. She's, she's on life support and they moved to her to, to an, they moved to her to another yeah. hospital. How is that possible? They, they just, they kept her, um, they're keeping her heart and lungs yeah. going. And they're feed, yeah, feeding uh, But if they take there. her off the machine, well, basically they want her organs is what they want. And so they want to harvest her. And that's okay. the biggest problem. So, but Ted Williams is dead, and the son's dead. So, yes. What did you want to say, Jeff, about their heads on um, tuna cans? Well, when you asked the uh, author about the uh, tuna can incident, he didn't seem to know or said he thought it was a rumor. But I have that Frozen book, and I have the actual passage here in front Ooh, of me. Read it for us. The book's called Frozen. Yes. <laughs> you went out and bought a book called Frozen. Um, I bought the book when the original guest was on years ago, and then you guys were talking about it the other day, so I skimmed wow. through it the other day and found me a You were actually here. moved to buy a book by somebody that came on this show. I'm stunned. I don't believe I've ever heard that. <laughs> stunned. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. We had the oil field worker guy sold every one of his fiction books yeah, the other sure. day. Yeah. And, six uh, of them. And, uh, six of them. Thank you, Jeff. Go ahead. All right. So apparently there's a, there's a when you move it from... Short-term storage to long-term storage, you actually have to remove the tuna can. Uh-huh. So this is they're discussing the removal of the tuna can from Ted's frozen head. Okay. Wow. The I would think they would have the head, some sort of they would have some sort of you know uh, you know like stainless steel like a, some, a, a pedestal of some kind of stainless steel yeah right a, a medical pedestal of some right, sort yes. instead of a tuna can you mm-hmm. know what I mean it's just you know poor Ted Williams mm-hmm. just awful. Jeff of Pennsylvania, thank you. And finally, David of El Paso. Uh, yes, David, how how cold is it, David? Uh, Jay, I was driving out of Chicago the other day, and I'm not kidding you. I saw a group of homeless men under the underpass lighting their own parts of the for heat. That's cold. All right. All right, thanks. I went, I went too far. That was a good uh, idea. The great, the great comic Vic it. Henley. Yeah. The great comic Vic Henley uh, is coming up, and he's a big Auburn fan. Went to the went to the big game. We heard him a few minutes ago talking about uh, South Carolina uh, and football. So Vic Henley is on the way. Stay where you are. I say, stay where you are. <laughs> <laughs> it's not working. There we go. The Jay Thomas Show afternoons. I have an Uncle Don. He, I have an Uncle Don. He's a, he's a Methodist minister in lovely Piedmont, Alabama. <laughs> and when he still calls me, he'll still leave a message and he'll go, Vic, Uncle Don Henley, the one that counts. <laughs> do, do you remember Kevin Meany? I love Meany. Meany is one of my comedy heroes. Meany's one of the guys that when I first started doing stand up, you know, I would go in the old Catch Rising Star back in the day, and you'd see the names on the list, Seinfeld, Kevin Meany, Gilbert Gottfried, Richard Belzer, mm-hmm. and then my mm-hmm. name would be on there, and I'm like, what the hell am I doing on here? So, yeah, oh, Meany you know and I what? comedy You know dinosaur. what's sad? Uh, we just worked Kevin, uh, the other day uh, down at the comedy I was going to say, I was going to say Kevin died this morning. Oh, God. Uh, gonna, oh, oh gonna do that. horrible human being you are. Uh, Kevin's dead. Kevin's dead. And, I, and, I, and uh, the perfect Meany response to that would have been, had you said Meany's dead, I, it would have been on me to go, I don't care. <laughs> I don't care. Meow, meow, zoom, 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 bing, bing, bing. So, so Vic, uh, b- before we talk to you just about life and Auburn football, and I'm a big S. I'm from New Orleans. I'm a big SEC fan and LSU and 
Uh, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a fan of the SEC, period. Uh, but um, uh, where were you? Where were you raised? Where were you? I was raised in Oxford, Alabama. It's uh, oh it's between God. Birmingham and Atlanta on I twenty. It's uh, I used to tell everybody it's not a town; it's just an exit. <laughs> so. so, are you an Auburn? You're an Auburn fan and not a Bama fan. No, no, I'm an Auburn graduate, and my two brothers played football at Auburn. My oldest brother was the SEC leading rusher, leading scorer, and player of the year in 1972. Wow. What's your brother's name? His name's Terry Henley. So he's 12 years older than I am. I'm the accident in the family. But I, this was wow. my 44th year of Auburn football. And uh, and you went to Auburn too, right? I'm an Auburn graduate. Okay. We all three, all the Henley boys got scholarships oh to Auburn. God, that's those, those two for playing football and me for grades. But we're all, I've been Auburn since wow. I've been alive. So. Wow. That's great. Yeah. You know what? I'll look your brother up because, you know, I'm a, uh, you know, lo- love all, love all that stuff. Uh, did your brother play with any black people? James Owens broke the color barrier and was the fullback. And the reason Terry got all those yards and touchdowns is because the little tiny white boy that didn't fumble just got behind the giant six foot three, two hundred and forty pound black man and followed him anywhere he went. <laughs> That's exactly. uh, by the way, before b- before we continue, where are you are you performing somewhere? We want to plug it, let people know where you are. What's going I'm on? in Gotham Comedy Club this weekend. If you happen to be in New York City, you can come down, oh, and uh, I'm there all five shows: two shows Friday and three shows Saturday. So, oh, that's great. wow! Yeah. Gotham. Now you you live in New York City. I live on the Upper East Side. I've been here for 28 years, pretty much. Now, how come you still have you just putting the southern accent on? For no, us? no, it was worse, Jay. It was actually, it, I sounded like a chainsaw back when I first met me. You I remember, this is what Vic used to, he used to come up on stage and he'd go, How y'all doing? <laughs> how y'all doing? And we're going, what did he say? He said, Absolutely. how y'all doing? How y'all doing? With the speed that I spoke, which goes against the slow southern stereotype, but with the accent and as fast as I talk, yeah. six, six, you know, six <laughs> out of ten shows, I'd walk off stage anywhere in New York and they'd go, we didn't understand anything you said. We have to, you not just slow it down for, for a second. Just please pretend you're speaking to people. So, so this, this weekend you, um, flew to, uh, Pasadena and that's right. saw one of the greatest college games ever played. I did. It was great. And several times during the game, I had to pinch myself and realize, you know, I really sometimes think I've been included in a lot of cool stuff down through the years. I believe I really am Forrest Gump. If you just pan to the left, two people, oh, there's Dick. What's Dick doing standing there with the president? <laughs> you know? Wow. I mean, that was a fabulous game. Now, I, I'm a, I'm a, and Auburn didn't I, win, I had, that was too bad. No, no, but I had, I had bet, uh, Florida State. I thought they were going to win the game. But as the game went on, I started going. You know what? Um, I don't care if I, I I don't care if I lose my money, which I did because they didn't cover. Right. But it was such a good game. I didn't. And buddies of mine and I were all texting each other, and they're all big gamblers, and they're going, "Yeah, we don't care. We just want to see a good game." But, well, you got one. I mean, it was completely yeah. amazing. It was one of the one of the greatest games I've ever been a part of, even though my didn't team didn't win, but. It was classy. Uh, all the hoopla leading up to it, there was no smack talking that was going to result in any kind of gunplay, which would happen at an Alabama Auburn game. And um, it was just fun and easy, and it didn't it didn't matter to me if they didn't win or lose. It was a great game. That's what I wanted. I thought it was you know I was telling everybody leading up to this that this is not going to be Duke. Duke will hit you with their book bag. Auburn's not hitting you with their book bag. You know what's funny? I said that to someone. I said, you know, Florida State played in the ACC, and I said, uh, the Auburn guys must be going to them. You know, we're not Duke, okay? And right. I like Duke, and I think they did a great job this year and everything else. But I thought about it. I thought, you know, hell, you know, they play a championship team uh, every week. Now, uh, we we had the announcer, the Auburn uh, football uh, radio Randall. announcer on. Yeah, we had him on a few weeks ago to talk about him screaming and yelling, you know, with those two incredible last second plays that won them, uh, the two big games. But then, uh, I've been, uh, the Auburn trees were poisoned or the Alabama trees were poisoned? The oak trees, uh, they were 200 year old oak trees that on the corner, Tumors Drug Store was the old drug store there on College Street in Auburn. It was called Tumors? T O O M E R tumors. tumors. It's a family name. No kidding. <laughs> yeah. What Seems like you wouldn't want to get a, a chocolate malt at Tumors. <laughs> we don't need any help from him. Okay. Nonetheless, um, they uh, uh, they were the trees were across. It's where the campus starts. And the, this guy named uh, uh, Up Guy. He was a retired Texas State Trooper, a lunatic. Named his kid something like Crimson, you know. <laughs> so, right, right. Roll time. So he he poisoned the trees. My brother Terry is the reason they used to go throw the toilet paper in the trees in the first place because in 72, 
Uh, Auburn went up to Birmingham to play Alabama. Alabama was number two in the nation. And the whole week long, Terry, on every media outlet, radio, TV, sports, newspaper, he kept saying, we're going to go up there and beat the number two out of number two. <laughs> so when wow. Auburn finally won the game, the, stud- the students for the first time in 1972 ran down to the oak trees and threw toilet paper in the trees, and it became a tradition, not just for a football win, but for any kind of big significant thing. You know, they had, had a couple of Auburn engineers who were in the space shuttle years ago. And so when they did one of the first flights, they, they, they rolled the trees at the drop of a hat. But the reason they rolled the trees is because Terry Henley in 1972 said we're going to beat the number wow. two. Number two. <laughs> so, you yeah. got to have remember, Terry Henley on the show. Oh, he's amazing. He's funnier than I am. I'm the least funny. My two brothers, everybody goes, who's funny? Who do you think's funny? And I'm like, George Carlin, Richard Pryor, and Terry Henley, Mike Henley. <laughs> wow. I had my house rolled a couple of times in high school, the trees in front of my house, and my my dad comes out, gets all pissed off, and we have to try and get the toilet tissue out of the trees, mm-hmm. which was the hardest thing in the world. How would how would they? These are giant trees. How would they two or three times a year get toilet tissue out of the trees? They go Do down there with cherry idea? pickers. They set up a bunch of those cherry picker, you know, guy in a basket kind of thing, and some poor slob that has the misfortune of that being his job is down there. You know, they got two of these giant cherry picker things, and you see them out there with these rakes like you rake leaves with, and they're just sitting there. First of all, they just hope it rains the next day, and then yeah. it's all right. <laughs> yeah. But after well, that, so you got to go to the there, you're, you're screaming and yelling, and then, of course, uh, with a minute left or whatever, you, you a minute 19, you guys take an incredible lead when the running back goes 37 yards, runs over people. And then that kid who, uh, you know, had a woman go down on him and his friends watched, uh, you know, in the in the toilet over there and all that shit, uh, this student athlete, uh, he guides them down the field and, and they beat you. Um, was there, were there any, was there any crying in your group or? No, 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 no. The, the only weird thing that happened that I thought was, you know, a little, uh, the pass interference call in the end zone, which was completely pass interference and both referees threw it. There were a couple of like super crazy Auburn people behind me going, Oh my God, that's a horrible call. That's, I mean, everybody turned around and went, No, it was. <laughs> he totally did it. I well, yeah, no, story. everybody doesn't think anyone causes any trouble. No, you know, no, no. Everybody, thought, it, everybody was sad and they had the wind taken out of their sails a little bit, but it was kind of like, it's the old cliche. You, 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 you take the gut punch and the better team won. I guess they came back and earned it with a minute to go in the fourth quarter. You tip your cap and you say, Good game and see you next year. That's all anyone can do. And we're not going to, Auburn fans are not going to act like Alabama fans. Alabama I like, I like, like you as a fan. Wait That's a, you're a Wait good a fan. Second. Of it. Wait a minute. Auburn fans aren't going to act like Alabama fans. What are Alabama fans going to act like? Oh, Alabama fans are going to cry and bitch and moan and blame it on somebody else and wish Barry Bryant was alive and all kinds of other. And they're, they're just going to make excuses. They're going to make excuses before they eat their fat asses onto the government scooter that they can get for free. <laughs> I wish everybody would be a fan like Vic. You know, that's a you're a good now, fan. Now, Vic, uh, after the game's over, they interview the the redshirt freshman quarterback for Florida State, and he's he's thanking says God did it and all that. He's dumb as a stick. Yep. And I, I come that's on. That's a I horrible go, thing to say, Jay. He's not he dumb is. As a he's stick, dumb. Okay. He's and a young, I watch young guy. He's passionate. No, you know what? I just don't think. I, I hear these guys talk, and you know everybody says, "Well, that's racist," but it was true when there were racist, all white yeah. guys on the team. No, but but they're dumb, and they don't go to class, and they they get them through, and it really pisses me off about college football when when they ought to be there to get an education and let the really good guys, you know, play another school somewhere else and then go play pro. But it's really, I mean, how does that affect you when you know that most of those guys? aren't getting a degree. They're not getting an education. Well, as a, as a football fan, now, I don't care. And I, I have jokes <laughs> in my show about that where I try to explain to everybody. I'm like, I'll be working in Ohio. I was in Ohio, in Cleveland, three weeks ago, and I was telling the Ohio State fans in the audience that you got to take that education and chuck that right out the damn window if you want to start winning again. <laughs> Just embrace it. Just embrace it. And I try to say, I go, SAT stands for Saturday in the SEC. <laughs> <laughs> yes, fantastic. Oh, wow, Vic, that's brilliant. Now, did you well, you know, know Notre Dame, Notre Dame, Duke, Stanford, they make you go to class and you have to take real, you know, classes. Oh, and, I know. And, 
Stanford's doing well and all, but but Notre Dame's been having real trouble the last well, few years. I've right? never, I've always hated Notre Dame. I liked Notre Dame when I was a kid because they, they were the only team that could beat Alabama, and that was always a joy for an Auburn fan. But I used to, I had an Orange Bowl 1973 or 74 T-shirt where the leprechaun was kicking the Alabama player through the goalpost, <laughs> <laughs> and I used to wear that to school all the time. And people were like, "Where'd you get this? You're, we're from Alabama. How'd you get a Notre Dame?" I'm like, "Don't worry about it." <laughs> Now, now, uh, Vic Kinley, by the way, will be at Gotham Comedy Club uh, this uh, Friday and Saturday night. Uh, are you married to a, a southern girl or a northern girl? I, I'm divorced twice. Uh, I, I did one of each. The, my first ex-wife, who was named Robin Williams, <laughs> 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 completely true. And I, I actually got to tell Robin a, a year or so ago at the cellar that. I was like, you know, my first ex-wife was Robin Williams, and he started laughing. I'm like, and the sad part is she was hairier than you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Houston, Texas. She was from Houston, Texas, and I married that was my first wife. And then the second wife was a Jersey girl. She was from Spring Lake, New Jersey, down at the shore. So I've tried both, and apparently I'm not supposed to be with anybody. I see. Do you have kids, Vic? No kids. No, no, no. No kids. No, no. The, 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 this handling line has to stop somewhere. <laughs> now, did you feel as though that, that after they married you, they made a conscious decision not to allow you to procreate with them? Well, they neither. I wouldn't have married either one of them. I talked about that before I got married. I don't want kids. I never wanted kids. My really? brothers have one daughter each, and and I'm an uncle, and I'm great, and they love me, and they're adults now. But I never, I wouldn't have married either woman had they wanted to have kids. That was a deal breaker. So now, why was, why was your childhood bad? Uh, oh you God, yes, comics? my childhood was horrible. My dad was a crazy alcoholic, terrorizing <laughs> wife beater idiot. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, oh, was, but one of the greatest days of my life was when I was seven years old, and I'm watching t 19 year old football All American beat his ass in the driveway. <laughs> and Kerry was with your, me. Your brother so beat your your brother beat the shit out of your dad. Yes, because we had enough. He, he was coming back for one more round of terrorization, and and my brother said, <laughs> "Don't you dare come in the house. I will meet you in the front yard and stomp your ass if you show up over here." Oh my, and my dad God. thought he was a badass and was going to do it. And my brother Mike and my mom, we watched through the window while Terry and Terry and he beat his ass so bad he had to crawl under the car to get away from him. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God! Now where has he passed away? Your dad? Pardon? Did he pass away? Your dad? Oh yes, he luckily he died in 1995, I think. Uh -huh. I don't really remember. Now you were a stand-up comic and working. Uh, did did he ever see you work? Did he ever comment? No, no, on no. He never. Uh, I saw him. He I, he may have seen me on television or something, but he never came to a show. He he pretty much knew wow. he was persona non grata. And at the end of his life, uh, my grandmother, his mom, uh, lived to be 99, and they had him move back to our town to live in the house to take care of her instead of sending her to the old folks' home. So he had moved back to our town when I was about. 30 something. I went home for a wedding and I went by to see my grandmother and I knew I was going to see him. I hadn't seen him in, since the ass whipping in the driveway practically. Wow. <laughs> wow. And what so was that I reunion like? What was that reunion uh, like? Oh, well, it was all right. You know, I let him off the hook. I didn't, you know, I was going to shake his hand and he asked me for a hug and I hugged him and sat down and talked to him for about an hour. My first ex, Robin, was the reason with all this was taking place because we were home on a visit and she's like, he's right up there. Don't you want to talk to him? I'm like, why would I want to talk to Satan? <laughs> <laughs> you know? and so oh, that's just, good. Yeah. Just, just make her shut up, basically. I'm like, I can go over there right now and sit down and talk to him like I saw him yesterday if, it's, if it needs to be proven to you. And I, I, said, I drove over to my grandmother's house. We sat there and talked to him for an hour. He explained to my ex all of his various prison tattoos. He's a, he <laughs> After he left us, he disappeared, and no one knew where he was. And then when we found him, I was about 14, and my mom came home one day and goes, well, I found out where your dad is, Federal Penitentiary, Atlanta, Georgia. And what was he in prison God. for? He was smuggling weed. He had a Seminole Indian and a big, fast boat, and they were smuggling weed back and forth in the Florida Keys. <laughs> I know it's wonderful. It's hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> well, it is, but, you know, it, 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 here we go again. We got a guy, a really funny guy. Who had the horrifying, you know, uh, beating dad and everything else, and and you end up being a comic because of all this dark shit. Mm -hmm. You know, it's 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 psychologically amazing.
amazing to me. Well, my mom always said growing up, look through every bit of it. One of her mantras was, you got to laugh to keep from crying. And she'll she'll tell horrific stories about fighting with the guy. I mean, like brutal. She told one, one of her favorite stories is like she grabbed one of my brothers and was trying to run off the front porch, and there was a hula hoop there. And my dad grabbed the hula hoop and caught her with it. <laughs> So she's telling me, I see a goddamn hula hoop, it makes me want to throw up. <laughs> now, you talk about your racist grandfather in your act. Yes. Right? Now, uh, and, and, and kids, uh, your friends would come over. Well, that was that was I, I, one of my buddies. I was, my granddad was hardly racist. He's completely terrible, and and I got he lived in '99 and sadly did not get dementia or Alzheimer's, so he was able to hate right up till the end. <laughs> and um, but when I was in high school, my senior year, I was going by, I was going to the movies with my friends, and we had to take some food by his house. And one of my buddies in the car was black. And I told I told my friend I'm going he's gonna say something to you he's gonna call you the n word he's gonna say something horrible but he actually can't walk without his walker so if he calls you the n word you should jump out of the car and run over to him and just hug him just squeeze him and <laughs> hug him and give him a wet willy lick his face do whatever you want because he can't let go of the walker he cannot <laughs> so, and so we my friend he he yelled the n word at my buddy my buddy ran over and hugged him he said oh it's so nice to meet you and he was just vibrating he didn't know what to do. <laughs> back to high school on Monday and black people that I didn't even know at high school were running up to me because the story had already gone through the whole town. They're like, take me up there and let me hug the racist. <laughs> I love that story. And so I took all my friends. This went on for three or four weeks. I probably took 15, 16 different guys up there to hug him. And every day he'd just be staring at me going, why are you doing this? <laughs> and I was going, because we're going to hug the N-word out of you, you bastard. We're gonna, I'm going to bring up, I go, there's more black kids in this county than you've got hate in you. And, and so he finally conceded about, like I said, it took about a month. And he yeah. called home one day. My mom knew nothing about it. My mom walked in the living room, looked at me and goes, I just got a weird phone call from my daddy. <laughs> <laughs> he, he said, you know what this is about. And basically the message was, tell Vic to stop bringing his black friends up here to hug me. And he didn't say the N-word. He wow. said black friends. And I'm like, success. <laughs> wow. That's a beautiful story. Wow. It is a great story. Vic, so, yeah, it's, 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 and it's Vic, really I, you know, uh, uh, yeah, it's a pleasure to meet you. He's Funny got such a great you. act. I mean, you'd really totally enjoy it. If you're in New York this weekend, Gotham. I'm in New York this weekend. Club. My mom's favorite thing, uh, years and years ago, and I've told Meany this, I was working with Meany at Caroline's, and I was the feature act, and Kevin was closing the show, and my mom happened to be in town. She watched the whole show, and she told me at the end, you know, if you were, if you really want to be funny, you're going to have to start trying as hard as that guy. <laughs> <laughs> wow. She was equating the energy with, you know, she said, you're just not trying hard enough. You're just standing there. He's singing and dancing and doing voices. <laughs> Well, well, you right. gotta like the taste of you gotta like the taste of penis. To do oh, that. God. <laughs> Why do you ruin it? Well, and a nice thing to say. You should have said that, Vic. You should have said that to your mother. You should have said, you know, you gotta, you gotta like a, you gotta like a kill boss up your ass every now and again to do that singing and dancing. Uh, you just ruined right. the whole interview, Jay. It was no, really I, nice. Vic Henley, uh, you know, War Eagle, and. War Eagle, um, War Eagle, Gotham Comedy Club, and you got the inside number. You call us any time. I mean, this is the easy show to get on, and we're no one gives a fuck about us. So just call any time. And uh, thanks so much, Vic Henry. I'll come down. I'll come down and sit in with you guys, and, and we'll do this. You know what? I'm going to probably come back to New York in, in the springtime, and uh, you'll come up. Thank you, Christina. Write that down. Let's do it. All right. Thank you, Vic Henry. Noted. On Vic. Bye, guys. See oh. you thanks, Vic. Wow. Um, Thomas. The afternoon drive show. Jay Thomas, Jay Thomas, Indy, Sirius XM 104, and on the Sirius XM app for smartphones. Ira, the weatherman, is in our studios back in New York. And um, by the way, our voice box is open 24 hours a day, 347 6 Sirius. That's for this show. And go on demand, and you can uh, hear the show for five days, I believe. And the reruns, um, I think they're still the same. Our uh, 104 reruns um, are tonight, 10 p.m. to 1 a.m. And then the uh, 101 reruns, the Howard uh, 101 reruns, they're 2 o'clock Friday afternoon and Saturday night at 8 o'clock. So you want to uh, rehear the show, there you go. All right, the weatherman, um, first of all, let's go, over, let's, let's go over the weather. Let's do the weather first. Uh, wow. The weather is around 24 degrees. 
going down mm-hmm. tonight around 20 degrees tonight. Wow. Now, what, wow, what is very a, cold. What, have you heard this term, the polar vortex? The polar, the polar vortex. Uh, arc, v- vortex. Arctic air came in. Yes. Yes. It's called a polar vortex. What is a polar, polar vortex? vortex? Well, it yeah, starts it? to get very, 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 very cold. That's what the vortex means? That is right. Three varies or four varies? Very, 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 very. That's four. Very, four. very, very cold. Very, very, very And cold. the other thing, what is the difference between Celsius and Fahrenheit? Uh, you know what Celsius centigrade? It'll be like, I don't know, two degrees, and then it'll be 80 degrees here. How, how do you figure that, that thing out? Well, hmm? you see, yes, yeah. yesterday we had the winds. Uh-huh. It felt yes. like it was 10 <laughs> degrees. It felt mm-hmm. like around zero degrees. <laughs> yes. What's that in Celsius? What's that in Celsius? It's lower. It's lower. Oh, okay. Lower in Celsius. <laughs> so if it's 20 hey, degrees, uh, it's let's, lower let's welcome, in Celsius. Let's welcome a big Ira fan and uh, uh, the adorable Kate Meany. Kate, uh, Kate welcome, hey, welcome Kate, to the show. Hey, Happy New Year to you, Kate. Happy New Year, Ira. <laughs> Hi, Kate. Mm-hmm. I I have a question, Ira. How did you like Santa Claus? Oh, I enjoyed that very, very much. That's not what he said to us yeah. over the break. Beautiful oh. movie. Yes, and also I was down at Macy's uh, before the Christmas, <laughs> and I was in Santa Land. Really? Did That's you see where Santa? Kevin should have brought you to. Well. I don't. I don't think a creepy old man at Santa Land is a really good idea for you. Uh, oh yes, uh, Jay. It I'm surprised the authorities. Very, said. very beautiful. <laughs> beautiful. Well, uh, aren't you afraid that people might think uh, a gentleman of your age uh, would be looking at children in a strange way? Well, uh, Jay, can I tell you one yes. thing? Everybody, sure. old yeah. and young, were up there. Yeah. Right. Really? Yes. <laughs> Mm-hmm. You could have been That's ninety so years much, old, Lyra. You could have been ninety years old, and you could have really? gone to see Santa. Land. So, uh, so what Kate, you Kate, Santa? she's very much like me. She just interrupts. <laughs> Go ahead, Kate. What, what did you say? say to Santa? Oh, I said to him, "Good luck. I hope you get up to the North Pole quick <laughs> and to enjoy yourself." Mm-hmm. That's a wonderful response. Uh, Ira, I have a question. What movies did you get from the library? All Here we right. go. Here we go. Here are the new movies from the library. Here go ahead, Ira. The Kate Meany Show. The New Republic. Mm-hmm. White Knuckles. Wait a minute. <laughs> White Knuckles? Future wait, wait. Weather. <laughs> Future Weather. Mm-hmm. The, oh, this picture was very, very good. The accused. Oh, oh, oh. Boy. It's always one. Good always movie. one. <laughs> the yeah, snatch. that's the one. Uh, Jodie Foster. <laughs> the what's that? The snatch. The, the snatch, snatch or just snatch? What is well, that? that's also the subtitle of the accused. <laughs> <laughs> Stand up, guys. <laughs> Kate, did you see uh, the snatch, Kate? No. No. Okay. No. No. Here's no, another no. good picture <laughs> that I watched last night. Uh, I watched the snitch. <laughs> So you got the snitch and the snatch all in the same oh, bundle? Oh, boy. No, I watched oh. that different. Oh, okay. okay. Kate, did yeah, you watch yeah. the snitch? No. But no. isn't that a Dr. Seuss book? The snatch? Uh, the snitch. Or the snitch? The snitch. The snitch. The snitch. I don't, I don't. The Grinch. Snitch is yeah. with Dwayne Johnson, formerly known Whoa, as The, the Rock. Rock. Oh. Yeah, oh. Oh. That picture was wonderful. <laughs> I give it a A plus. A plus. <laughs> also, stories we tell. Microphone. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh, stories we tell. Who's in there? Stories we tell. Oh, who's in it? Ooh. We're looking. <laughs> We're looking. Stories. Does he have them in front of him? <laughs> no, no, no. No, no he has mind. them all written down. Oh. Stories if- we tell is uh. Oh. Michael Polly, Polly, John. Polly, that's <laughs> right. Oh, he knows them all. Wow. After all right. Earth. After oh, Earth. I saw that movie. It was so bad. <laughs> and here's another one. The last one is Inch 
Allah. What is oh. it? Inch, inch, inch. Allah. Inshallah. Tyra, inch. Tyra, did you like um, After Earth? I didn't watch that as yet. I might watch it tonight. <laughs> All right. Inch All right, Allah yeah, right. is a Canadian doctor finds her sympathies <laughs> so sorely tested while working in the conflict ravaged Palestinian territories. Oh, that sounds exciting. Now, now, now you see, is, Garrett, I'm going to tell you a, f uh, a thing. What? What? Uh, in Flushing, I'm able to pick out great pictures. Okay. Great now, movies. wait a minute now. Ira, that's not going to be a good movie for Jews. That's going to say well, the Jews are bad. I got that. Bad. I want to talk. I want to watch it. All right. They, they're going to say they're torturing the Palestinians and all that. How are you going to feel about that? <laughs> well, I can well, watch it. I can still watch can, it. <laughs> will you cheer for the Jews in that movie? Of course. I'll cheer for everybody. <laughs> cheer for but especially the Jews. Right. Ira. Well, yes, Kate. Mm -hmm. I have another question. Uh huh. Okay. Um, what did you? Do? What was your job at the hospital? Oh, I was telling I, her about that he worked at the hospital for many years, and I want to know what he I used to be a mailman, a mail. I used to deliver mail. That's mm -hmm. so wonderful, Ira. <laughs> did, yes. Did you deliver mail to the patients? Oh, mail to the patients, mail to the executive. Office and mm -hmm. did you have a card Everything. that you would you would uh, oh, yes. push the card around? Oh, yes. Did they give you lunch for free in the cafeteria? Oh, uh, at that time when I began mm -hmm. working in the hospital, I don't mm -hmm. want to mention what hospital. Okay, mm -hmm. no, mm -hmm. no. Uh, it Why not? used to be thirty Mayo cents. Jacoby, I think. For lunch, Jacoby. How much? Thirty cents. Thirty cents. Wow, that and, was years ago. And you right. didn't have to tip. That was no. just. Did they take that out of your pay or? No, you just pay them thirty, like thirty cents. Thirty cents. Now, now, and, Ira. Uh, so you you ate for thirty years. You ate hospital food. Yes, yeah, sometimes. Yes. Sometimes How was that? Delicious. People don't. You loved hospital food. Sure. I yes. See. All right. It's thirty well, cents. Kate, what's not? Uh, uh, Kate, are you back at school yet? When do you start school? Yes, I'm back at school. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Ira, what did you have for dinner oh. last night? <laughs> I had chicken. Every wow. night. Yeah, you eat chicken every night, Ira. Every night. And she's interested in this woman that lives with you. Kate was interested yes. in Norma. Tell us about Norma. Yeah. Oh, well, <laughs> she's another thing. <laughs> she's another thing? Yeah. Yeah. Now, you're you're well, not dating a... her, though, are you? She's, you're not romantically involved. Well, that is a, that not is too mystery. much. Was, I, oh, now it's not a... too much. See, this story changes every couple of yeah, months. Yeah, but she did treat me very, very good. Meaning how? Maybe fifty dollars. Wow! <laughs> Why? By the you know bedside? what? I have no idea. <laughs> no no idea. idea. This woman. <laughs> but the holiday. Right. Well, what let's. Did you uh, give her? Let's thank Kate Meany for coming on to the show. He gave her twenty-five dollars. <laughs> <laughs> Kate Meany. Kate, I'll Kate. talk to you Kate. later, Kate. Uh, you're my. Bi I'm your biggest fan. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> oh, cool. Wait, can oh, I ask one more question? <laughs> All right, go ahead. All right, more questions. <laughs> Ira, what? Do you like Alvin and the Chipmunks, the movie? Oh, Alvin and the Chipmunks. <laughs> did uh, you yes. watch the sequel? No, I did not. <laughs> oh, wait, oh, wait, wait, wait. Ira, right, do you watch enough. My Strange Addiction? <laughs> I know. I, I never watched. No, he doesn't yeah. watch TV. Yeah. All right, that's doesn't good, watch. Kate. <laughs> All right, thank you. Bye, bye, Kate. Bye, bye honey. Um, uh, is, Kate. Is, Kate, is Kate hard of hearing? Right. That's what I was going to ask. Does she project <laughs> that much at home? She's yes. very much like. Well, she's on the radio now. She gets very excited. <laughs> oh mean, my God! Well, about the radio. It's so, perfect for radio. Yeah, so she gets very well, excited. She's kinda, Maybe she's hard to hear hearing check. She's <laughs> not hard of hearing. She's excited yeah. and uh, on uh -huh. a cell she, phone. She, Ira's in she, the presence yes, of her. Right. Does she she's take theatrical. Ritalin? Is she on Ritalin? Yes, she is on drugs. Yes. Thank you very she's, much. She actually makes meth now because she watches Breaking Bad. She knows how to make it. <laughs> well, Ira, uh, you got how long will it take you to watch all ten movies? Uh, well, I'll be before. finished with it by next Friday. Well, all right, wonderful. Jay, uh, let's go to yes. Another Ira. thing is. Mm -hmm. This past Sunday, mm -hmm. everything should have worked out very, very good, but sometimes things don't mm -hmm. work out that great. What happened? I was online 
two and a half, three hours, frigy, freezing in that cold weather mm -hmm. around Gracie Mansion. You wanted to go inside of Gracie yeah, Mansion? Yeah, went to meet the mayor. Yes, I did go inside and see the mayor. Did you have your picture taken with him? Yes, a minute, less than a minute to shake hands with him and to pose for a picture. Where is that picture? Well, they have to send it to me. Well, as soon as you get oh, that okay. picture, we're going to put that up. He waited, waited three online hours. For, uh, for many hours. Three hours. Yeah. It was like going to a rock and roll show. If they would was have it had worth the it? drifters, the Cadillacs, mm -hmm. the coasters, it yeah. would have been better. But to see a man, big man, and mm -hmm. that's it. He's... Was the ex-lesbian wife there? No, she was not. Was the drug addict daughter there? No, they she's were not an ex. Not. It, 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 that's What's not that? his ex-wife. That's his wife. No, I said ex-lesbian wife. I meant to say. No, okay. that's what you said. Ex-lesbian. Well, yeah. Jay. She was a lesbian until apparently he's just you know he's got a velvet tongue. Maybe he's gay. He, no, he turned her around. Oh no, oh no, he worked it over good. On yeah. Friday, it snowed a lot in the city, and he was out. He was shoveling, shoveling the snow. But he only mm -hmm. shoveled his own snow, not his neighbor's. Well, why should he shovel Who does his that? Neighbor? Why should he uh, shovel his He's neighbor. a neighbor. He's oh, supposed okay. to help out all citizens of New York. I wouldn't shovel my neighbor. You know what, Most Garrett? Most neighbors I don't... shovel their neighbor's driveway. Garrett, I'd, I'd, have gotten that, hey, I'd, have, I'd have gotten that drug addict daughter up and said, after all the shit you put us through, get out there and shovel, you drug addict. What, I mean, you the know daughter what? is only like in, she's like high school in yeah. high school. Jay, you know, who cares? Easy. Who cares? It. You should have heard what he said about Chelsea Clinton in the nineties. <laughs> oh, me skate, me skate. <laughs> what he's about Amy Carter? A, first of all, Jay, oh, he's gonna be a please. very, very good mayor. Oh, you like gonna the have, now? You want to hear? You don't want to hear something? You're going to have dead bodies laying in the street with a knife still in them. No, they okay? won't. No, we oh, won't. yeah, they will. In front of your apartment there in uh, the Bronx. Co-op city. Uh, Co-op well, city. To... And, Jay, can I tell you yeah. one thing? Well, after this, you're going to Rodney Lee Conover is going to win <laughs> no, in California. I don't think so. Yes. All right. Rodney I, Lee Conover. Is, I like how uh, he likes some... Bill de Blasio and Rodney Lee Conover. Oh, that that total right. opposites. Makes all sense. This, yes. Um, uh, uh, send send him back to get coffee or cut his mic off. Uh, right. Kelly of Arkansas. Kelly uh, of Kelly. Arkansas. Uh, Hello. Go ahead, Kelly. Yes, go ahead. Uh, first thing, I'm from Stevenson, Alabama, originally, and mm -hmm. that's right around Auburn. And that we we were we really liked that game, even though we thought it it sucked. Yeah, it was a great uh, game. Oh, you're no a matter, good no fan, also. I like I like no, fans no, like was you a, and Vic. You know what? It was just a flat out great. Uh, football game. Flat yes, out. it was. But um, I was calling because um, I uh, when uh, when you had Cadillac Man on way back in the old days, um, mm -hmm. I bought his book because of you, and I actually called back then and told you that I had it, and it was a good book. What What was Cadillac Man about? Uh, he was a homeless guy. Mm hmm. And. Uh, uh, he was he was very good. Um, he was, but but I really thought that he kind of made the whole thing up. But but it was still really? a good book. Yeah. All right, Cadillac man. I don't remember him, but but thank you. So you're yeah. you're just calling to say you bought a book too. Well, that's cool. That's cool. Yeah. yeah. We've had some people say that that we've sold some books for him. That's good. All right, thank yeah. you, Kelly, very much. Let's go to Mark, who's in Texas. Yes, Mark. Go ahead. Hey, hey buddy, how you doing? Good, thank you. Hey. That Celsius and uh, Fahrenheit thing. Mm -hmm. I had my truck mm -hmm. in uh, service the other day. They, mm -hmm. uh, some reason, my fucking temperature in my dashboard now only reads Celsius. I can't figure out how to get it back. So, have we figured it <laughs> out yet? Yeah, you. Uh, it's plus 32, and then you multiply it by five ninths. Good luck. By five, by five what? Five ninths. Five ninths. Yeah, so that's five it. Nights five first, nights. and then you add thirty-two. So is that point nine? No, no, that's oh, not like right now. No, no. I read it fifteen point five Celsius. Fifteen point five Celsius, Garrett. 
So you say yeah. you divide it by five, you, you multiply it by five nights first, Garrett? Yes, PEMDAS, parentheses, exponents, multiply, division, uh, addition, subtraction. Ah. Is that, uh, I don't know if that's going to work out or not. So was it 15 Celsius? So 15 times 9 is 9, 130 divided by well, 5 it's 15. is 15.5. 20, so it's like 50 degrees? 50. Really? Yeah. yeah. Where are you? Oh, God. Uh, Fort Worth, Texas right now. That sounds right. Well, does it feel like 50 degrees? No, no, it's colder than that. Though. It says 46 oh, according to Google. Right Forty six. Forty six. Forty six. Forty six. Forty six, huh? Yeah. Okay. So that's how we're figuring it out now. That's that's what we're gonna do. When you need to figure it out, just call us. Yep. I'll be Get there. Garrett's number. He can figure it out for you. <laughs> sure. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'll put it I'll put him on the hotline there. Okay. Yeah. All right. Speed dial. All right, guys. All right, thank you, Mark. Care. Or call the Canadian. All right, let's go to Peter Peter of Missouri. Yes, Peter, go ahead. Peter of Missouri. Yeah. Uh, Jay, do you see that video of uh, Dennis Rodman singing Happy Birthday before the basketball game? But they had both teams lined up. He started mm -hmm. clapping in front of Kim Jong Un, and both, and even the American team started clapping. And then they they got beat. And if you look at both teams, there's no way they should have got beat. <laughs> well, of course they got beat. I mean, they they were supposed to. You know, you went over there. You knew that the North Korean team was going to win. They have to win. Because of Kim I, Jong Un, I read uh, there's a there's a book out by a guy that was uh, from Japan, and he was the sous chef for Kim uh, Jong Un's dad, Kim Jong Il. Il. And the dad went to uh, when he, when he went out to play golf, they announced that every uh, hole was a birdie. Did you know that? Mm -hmm. Every hole was a birdie, and and no one could ever beat him if he played a card game. He or had he like played, the. He had like the course record. Every time he would play golf, he would break the course record. It was insane. He got like hole in one every hole or something. Oh, you got a one. Oh, they're on. Um, they're on jet skis, and the, and the chef is on a jet ski, and Kim uh, Jung Il is on a jet ski, and and uh, Kim Jung Il says to the chef, "Let's race." <clears throat> so they race, and the chef beats him, and mm. all of Kim Jung Il's associates thought he was going to be put to death. Yeah, he should have been. Weird, weird. Did you see the Dennis Rodman uh, interview on CNN the other morning? No. Oh, you you have to pull that up. It's so crazy. He's completely out of his mind, Dennis Rodman. I well, mean, he bought him. First of all, they paid these guys a bunch of money to go to North Korea, and he's brought uh, what twelve or fifteen but guys he looks with him. So high and so insane, you know, with the sunglasses on. And it's like ten minutes, but I have a two-minute clip here. There's probably the yeah, two-minute clip is probably yeah. Let me hear the two-minute relationship this is him. with this man. You've said it many times. We've Chris seen Cuomo. it demonstrated yeah. yes. for whatever reason. Yes. Are you going to take an opportunity right, right. if you get it right. to speak up for the family of Kenneth Bay and to say, let us know why this man is being held, that this is wrong, that he is sick. If you can help, then will you take the opportunity? No, 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 the one thing about politics, can obey the one thing. If you understand, I got it, guy. If you understand what Kid and Bay did, yeah. Do you understand what he did? What did he do? You in tell this me. Country. You tell me what he do. In, and no, 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 no. You tell me. You tell me. Why is he held captive? They haven't released any country. charges. They haven't what? released. They haven't released any reasons. I would. I would. I would. I would love to speak on this. Go ahead. You know. <laughs> I love Chris Cuomo during this. You got, you got, you got ten guys here. Ten guys here. They have left their families. <laughs> Left their damn families to help this country as is a sports venture. Got ten guys, all these guys here. That's their family. Dude, anyone, I know he's on a pill. That? We yeah. do, that's, and we appreciate that, that's, and we wish them yeah, well with the cultural exchange. No, 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 no. I'm just saying, no, I don't give a what the, I'm just rash ass what the hell you think. I'm saying to you, look at these guys here. Look at them. Yeah, but Dennis, don't put it on them. They, they don't use them as an excuse for the behavior out. that you're, they that they you're they putting on yourself. They came here. You, ju you just basically were saying that Kenneth Bay did something listen, wrong. We don't even know what the charges are. Don't listen, use these guys listen. as a shield for you, you Dennis. Can, you oh, listen, here he goes listen, now, the shield. Listen, listen, oh, listen. Ain't no shield. I got, I got it. Let me, let me do this. Really? Really? <laughs> I want to tell you one thing. People around the world, around the world, 
I'm gonna do one thing. You guy behind the mic right now, we are the guys here doing one thing. We have to go back to America and take the abuse. Do you have to take the abuse? Well, we gonna take it. Do you, sir? Let me know. Oh, are you gonna take that abuse? We gonna get it. He's drunk. That's what I do. Yeah, he's definitely drunk or high one or something. Day. One day. Allegedly. This door is gonna open. Is that now, what is it? That's 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 CNN. Yeah, yeah. CNN. That was the morning that's show. CNN. Yeah. And that was yesterday. That morning. is that is nuts. And they played it that all is. day yesterday. And then, like last night on CNN, they had a roundtable discussion with Anderson Cooper and all these psychologists. And you know, what does this mean with Dennis Rodman being so? You know, it's what does it mean? Well, yeah, they were just trying to, to you know dissect it and try to figure out who well, Dennis Rodman wrote, is. He wrote this book. And he talks about having a date with Madonna. Did you ever read this passage? Mm -hmm. He walks into her condo in Miami, and according to the book, he's not there a minute and a half, and right. she pulls his pants down and just, you know, gobbles his knob. And I'm looking at that, and I'm listening to that right there and thinking, what was Madonna thinking? <laughs> <laughs> what the hell was she thinking? But does he sound completely Crazy. insane? Crazy. Of course. Yeah. And that's what everybody on yeah. all the pundits last night were saying. He's absolutely crazy. And there were ten guy, ten black guys around him, and they all looked like the boyfriend whose girlfriend's too drunk at the party. Yeah. And they're all just like, shut up, oh, my God, shut up. Yeah. You have to yeah. kind of be supportive, but you yeah. just wish he would shut up. And they're, yeah. and they're all Who was of, trying to help him? Was that a spokesman or another ball no, player? Just other basketball yeah, players that were like around Kurt him. Thomas, maybe? Yeah. Yeah, y'all shut up. You, I, I, I don't I'll have to take this. I'll take it. I'll take it. <laughs> I tell you what he. I tell you who he sounded like. He sounded like Benedict Cumberpatch, who's the voice of the dragon in the new Hobbit movie. <laughs> That's what the dragon sound. And the dragon's just as mad as Dennis Rodman in the Hobbit. I'm going to eat you. You know, like that. Wow. All Say right. Well, thanks for yes, Sarah. Next Wednesday. Yeah, let's forget we just talked very, about it. Very, very yes. big day for me. Empire City. What is it? The what birthday. Is it? That is right. That's right. I remember. How uh, old will you be next Wednesday? Well, I'm, I'll be 39. <laughs> All right. All right. Oh, I'm the weather man. Out. Kevin Meany is there. Uh, Mark DiCarlo coming up in a few minutes. Oh, right. The Jay Thomas Show. Uh, stay where you are. The Jay Thomas Show. For idiots, by idiots. Stop idiot action. The Jay Thomas Show. He's the afternoon guy. On Indy. Sirius XM 104. And on the Sirius XM app for smartphones. Indy. There's a four in the road. Can't seem to make up my mind. There's a country song for every guest we've ever had. If, if there was a, if we had a guest on that... You know, had a pool cue up his ass. I'm sure there's. I had a pool cue up my ass. I had a pool cue, pool cue up, my up my ass. The Everly Brothers. Um, I forget where I met Mark DiCarlo, but I know we had a good time when we met. We weren't loaded, I don't think. Mark, welcome to the show. How are you hey, doing? Mark? What a what a coincidence! I was just chalking up my butt when you started talking about that. <laughs> yeah, there you go. With that little blue chalk that you play a uh, pool with. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I think you know. I think we met when you were doing your um, your your power show here in Los Angeles. Your, yeah, your I power mean, bottom you, show. Yeah. No, power one hundred and six. Uh, that's uh, Kevin Meany. You know Kevin Meany, Mark. You know Actually, him? Kevin Meany was on a show I did for the um, the Hallmark Channel. We we went over to his house and we cooked I Irish soda bread. It was called Sunday dinner, and that's my right. mom still she has people over. She goes, "Oh, put that VHS in with the." Uh, <laughs> With your dad and Kate and your that wife you had. We, well, yeah, you were still in the National League at that point. Yes. We had a great time. <laughs> still in the National League. Yeah, very funny. Well, you know what, Mark? I mean this, and uh, we've never really discussed it, but you've kind of had the same career that I've had. We're both guys that everybody thought was just going to go through the roof. <laughs> and super talented. Both of us are good actors, funny guys, stand-up comics, host, and everything. 
and and I know you you know you do well and I do well, but we've settled into uh, you're living in Chicago and doing the the uh, the morning show there, a TV show, right? You're kind of a regular. Actually, I'm, I live in Los Angeles, but I go I, I really? do the uh, morning show in Chicago. I'm there about once a month, and I do comedy pieces for them, and I do their junket. But I, I think that's a fair characterization because I think you're hilarious. And, you know, I see so many people, as I'm sure you do, that are rich and famous who have actual, uh, no talent. Yeah, well, you know, uh, when I first met you, we were just kindred spirits, and, and, and we were both, you know, on the rise. But, you know, there, and Kevin's, you know, a fucking genius also. But the weird thing is, there's only so much room on the, you know, on the on the head of the pin. But I thought we had met doing a, a quiz show or something, but um, I did not realize that when, when you what came to What about that show you talked about earlier, about the top of the hill? Uh, King of the Mountain. I, I didn't do it with him. I did it with Mark oh. Thompson. Okay, I'm sorry. Mark Thompson. Um, but, uh, when you came to, uh, Hollywood, you would, so you got on the quiz show, Sale of the Century, and on yeah. Tic Tac Doe. I did not, I, I was on Sale of the Century a month after I graduated from UCLA, and I won $115,000, and I was the all-time champion, and I never had to get a day job. So, I wow. mean, even though I'm not, uh, hugely famous, I've never had to actually get a real job, so I consider it a win. Well, radio was my, you know, was my quiz show. So I, you know, I had all those radio shows and all that stuff. Well, you know, what, the radio on, is the only, yeah. I think, the only real creative medium left because you don't have 15 different people pissing on everything you say. You do it, you mm -hmm. do it for three hours, and if you're good, people listen. If you're not, you end up working at uh, Jack in the Box. Don't that's mention it. Jack in the it. Box. Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> now we had the produ uh, the reason why I have you, I have you on. We had this producer on. Uh, 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 he was complaining. He was suing uh, MythBusters. Oh uh, yeah. What, what? What's your? What? He's a nut. What's his what's name? His name? Um, uh, his um, name's John Hodgkiss. Yeah. He, I did a show with him called uh, uh, This Versus That. And right. he came on, and he. I thought he was suing MythBusters for the entire idea of MythBusters. No. But he was only suing for a couple of ideas, and he was a huge fan of mine and wanted to do a show with me and everything else. So I said, well, let's have this guy on. You know, this sounds interesting. He's a big producer. Mark DiCarlo uh, has worked for him and all. This guy's a nut, a complete <laughs> nut. And, uh, he's not was, a nut. You know what? He's, he's, really? he's very passionate. Passionate. And and uh, he's he's David fighting Goliath. Now I don't know that I would approach it in the same way that he's approaching it. I think if you've got the if someone has wronged you and you've got enough proof, you quietly call your lawyers and let the lawyers deal with it. But uh, but it was only an episode, and they'd offered him money, and he just didn't want that amount of money. Well, as I understand it, he gave them a Bible of the entire show. We did six mm -hmm. hour long episodes that are airing in. Uh, Europe and elsewhere. And very big in Poland. Yeah. We are huge. We're bigger than Kilbasa in Poland. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and uh, uh, I, I think he feels that they took a bunch of ideas from him. Oh, okay. All right. All right. And and he said that they offered him money, but it wasn't enough. Yeah. I know uh, he sounds they... crazy, he, but he's just very passionate and very smart, and he's he's getting kicked around. And and, and you're doing other shows with him. Uh, we haven't done any more of those. No, I'm, I've been doing the um, the ABC morning show in Chicago. It's called Windy City Live. I've been doing that mm -hmm. for three years, and I'm doing another talk show with another producer in Hollywood who's quieter that we're starting this month. Oh, great. All right. All right. But I listen well, to you. I, Jay, I listen to you every day. I think you and Kevin are very funny together. Oh, stop it. Stop I it. Do. No, I have the XM in the car. I'll cut that out. Really? Stop it right now. <laughs> I think you're both on the pot. <laughs> <laughs> Although oh, uh, I, I didn't yeah. I, I hadn't heard Kevin for a long time and so I'm listening to your show and I'm mm. hearing about his new uh lifestyle choices. Yeah. My new and lifestyle. That's what my wife would say. He actually came out on my show a few years ago. Uh, and I guess he figured he would announce it here where it really couldn't hurt him. And, uh, but he went through the divorce and, uh, it was, it was pretty traumatic. Oh, stuff sure, yeah. 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 Now, can and, I ask you, know, you a we, serious we, we, question, we, Kevin? Absolutely. I, I'm curious. I, I have, uh, you know. Yes, I, I was attracted to you. <laughs> That's what I wanted to know. Moving on. Now, is it, is, is that something that slowly dawns on you? You knew that since you were a little kid and you just decided to embrace it later in life? I mean, I've, I've got a lot of gay friends and, I always, I, I'm curious, 
as to what the process is. If you kind of all, is it something you can change midlife? No, it's something I always knew. I always knew I was gay, but it was something where I just. You know the where I was raised and how I was raised, and yeah, uh, I you know I could never admit it to myself or to anybody else. So it took me a long time to finally uh, get a hold of it and say, "Listen, I'm not afraid anymore, and I'm going to let you know who I am." And Jay, you and the stuff that you do with animals—is that something that's new, or that is something? Ah, uh, no. As a child, I had a dachshund. <laughs> and, um, a weenie dog, and sure. and uh, his tail would go in the air, and I was uh, attracted to. You How know, could you not be, for God's sake? Uh, yeah, I had a dachshund, and then he became. And the way paralyzed. they walk, they're just waving at your yeah, face like, come on. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Right. He became paralyzed as he got older, and he put a roller skate on his ass. And what's funny was, is that was, once I entered him from the rear, he could walk again. Well, so I would imagine it's hard to get traction if he's on man. roller skates. He's always kind of yeah. skipping away from you. Well, you know what's funny? We we really did have this dachshund named Duke, and and he was nuts. And he bit everybody. We should have put him to sleep. He would bite everybody. He was really awful. And I go off to college, and I come back, and he's really old. And I hear some strange noise coming down. We have these terrazzo floors, these kind of you know stone floors. He had gotten uh, uh, paralyzed, and the vet put a roller skate on his ass. I'm not joking. <laughs> And he he would walk, you know, normally, and, and the roller skate, his ass would, like, hit the wall and everything else, and I could hear it. And then he would piss, and it would rust the roller skate wheels, and we'd have to oil it. I know, and we kept this thing alive for This is back in the day before roller blades. You're talking the quad skate. <laughs> yeah. Well, I don't know what else they put on a dog's ass. That they, they must have the something dog a little asleep. more sun. <laughs> Probably something a little more scientific, but we had a you know we had a roller skate on his ass. So Mark, uh, you're living in California. You're going back to uh, Chicago and everything else. And every day you get up and you're you're. Do you still go on auditions and stuff? Acting auditions. I do. You know, I just got back from uh, a Parks and Rec audition just today, and I'm going in for some improv thing on Monday. But you know, what? it's not as much fun as it used to be. There's there's the, no. the, the roles that you call get called in for are not particularly. Fun and exciting. I mean, when I first got to town, we were doing all kinds of crazy stuff, and it was more fun. And I don't know if that's a function of my age or just that there aren't as many real clever things going on anymore. You don't, you don't audition, well, do you? Don't, don't they just say, "Get me, Jay Thomas"? No, that that ended. That ended. But uh, somebody said the other day, you know, I haven't done anything comedic in a long time. I played nothing but bad guys, uh, like I just did. Um, uh, Ray Donovan and you play, and, and play you the, play gay. Who wait? Who? What part the, did you do on Ray Donovan? Because I read for that show and I thought I kicked ass. Oh, did you read for the for the for the uh, TMZ guy? You read the beat. Yes, the, uh, is that the part you got? That's the part I got. You asshole. <laughs> <laughs> and he's gay. The TMZ. Well, yeah, guys. I know. Well, yeah. You know what? At least here's my thing. As long as somebody mm -hmm. good gets it, I don't care. So God bless Jay. God bless. You want to hear the truth? You want to hear the truth? Yeah. I think I think deep down inside. There is a there is a touch of evil in all of these people, and I believe that you are a nice guy, and no matter how you try to act mean or rough or whatever, deep down inside, I'm not a nice guy. No, I can be evil. I can no, totally no, be evil. I don't. No, you just I don't, don't sound evil when you said that. I can be no, evil. No, <laughs> no, no, I can. I can be evil. Hey, hey I, hate anyway. I really, I really have some deep. Deep, dark yeah, Jay shit down is there. really fucking. Well, that's the evil. New Orleans. That's the swamp mojo that you got deep <laughs> in your soul. Oh, absolutely! I could wrap your body in a bag with chains and put you in Alligator Alley, and not even think about it. Hey, so, you know, I, um, I, I do a, a, a podcast of actually. We found out it's the number one travel entertainment podcast in America right now. It's called The Fork on the Road, which is why you played that crazy country song. And um, uh, I have a travel book too, and I, I talk about my favorite party in America. Which is the Jazz Fest? Do you go every oh, year? Oh, right, yeah. No, I don't go every year. I, I did Mardi Gras. But you've been to the Jazz Fest, every... right, Jay? Oh God, no, no. I was there when it first started. That's we a huge, huge uh, festival. We would go on Friday, and my brother and some guys uh, had a had a concession stand there, which made tons of money, and they made trout amandine, and they had alligator uh, meatballs mm. and all this kind of stuff. And so, so I was there, you know, backstage and everything else. I'm not a big music guy. What? And I would, I'm not a big music guy. I'm not a big concert guy. When I go to the jazz fest, I like the, um, I like the gospel tent. That's my favorite. What are you, 90 years old? You just go sit in there <laughs> no, and sit in the, no, in the midst no, of the No, let me tell you why. People? 
they bring in these uh, groups, mostly African American, right? And they start singing, and there's an ambulance behind the tent. <laughs> I'm not joking. No, there's it's an true. They park them on the on the the dirt track there. Yeah. Yeah. Here's why. Now the ambulance is there for a lot of reasons. And so you've got these kind of, uh, you know, high school, uh, aluminum, uh, football stadium thing. And so they're singing and these, these people and like, young girls and guys, they become, uh, uh, filled with the Holy Ghost, the Holy Jesus, Spirit. Yeah, Jesus gets into them. They faint and they fall from the stands onto the ground and have to be taken to the hospital. Which I and think so I go. I mean, if you were Jesus and you knew that shit was happening, <laughs> wouldn't you? Wouldn't you be a little, you know, a little more delicate? They have use people. No, you think they have catchers waiting for it to happen. I go Christ not every Christ? year. <laughs> yeah, they have this Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit catchers, and I sit in there and I bring people with me. And they go, "What are we doing in here?" First of all, I love the music. I go, "Just wait." And man, they <laughs> crank up, and they're going, you know, "My Lord to thee" or whatever it is, and boom, one of them, and they're usually tipping the scales at well over 200 they and they have That's their thin. uh their their quiet their choir uniform on right their uh -huh. you know their their sateen choir uniform man i gotta tell you next time you go you gotta go in the gospel tour. oh and do That's you make good. book I, I mean can you bet uh, who's gonna go drop when they're gonna drop <laughs> yeah you see them get woozy you definitely see them and then their friends oh, try and catch Lord them oh, <laughs> and sometimes God, they, they fall the, 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 the holy spirit hmm. You are an evil bastard. I would have never yeah. thought of that. Oh no, I've I and now I, I went uh and we've you know, I've been backstage, I've seen everything. I'm not really I'm not really into the to, to the hero worship. I've seen everybody, you know, Springsteen, everyone. But I went when it was really the first ones. We'd go on a Friday, it was all it was uh locals and we would eat and there would be all the local bands and everything else and get around. now it's you know it's a big international yeah, thing don't, I, I don't, do, don't, i've done mardi gras every year for, don't piss on it it's i think it's the great I'm not pissing amalgam on. of of roots music you get people you know what the first time i went was the weekend of the the rodney king riots here in la and i i remember we took off and we left la before the riots started i land i get into the hotel room i turn on the tv and my city's on fire and then the next day was the first day we were going to the festival, and I didn't know what to expect, you know. It could have been ugly. Uh, so we in New Orleans? Of, yeah, no. Well, yeah, I, I, I left L.A. before the riots started. I land in New Orleans. I turn on the TV, and I see that L.A., there's riots and all this shit's going on. you think on. that they were going to riot in New Orleans also? Well, I mean, I, I didn't know. Like race riots? You thought Hey, Mark, hey, yeah. hey, Mark yeah. uh, we, ha uh, we would have handled things a lot differently in New Orleans than they handled them in Los Angeles. No, you, you know what happened? I ended up going there, and I was in front of the yeah. Fado Do stage. First, like 11 o'clock in the morning, someone, someone's playing some Cajun music, and I bump into this 300-pound black lady. And she looks at me, and I look at her. We don't say anything. We just start boogieing and dancing, and we dance together for like 10 minutes, and then I hug her. And I walk away, and I'm thinking, "Wow, this is the center of the cool universe." And, and I that's your wife now, right? Year. Do you think? Do you think that people were thinking about the Rodney King riots in New I, Orleans at the jazz festival? I don't. Really not. I well, no. I, I don't know, but I I was no. I was nervous. About you know what it. you are? You're evolved. No, you care and all that. A target, they're not going to do anything to you. They didn't give three shits. You're right. It, was, it was a beautiful, it was, a, it was just a great, yeah. it was all about the food and all about the music. Now, are there too many black people in New Orleans? Absolutely. But that's not the what? point. <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> You're an idiot. So, markdecarlo.com, find out who he is, where, and if, if you live in all Chicago, the kids are you already there. know. All the kids. You and, all, and come to the, listen to the show. It's called the Fork on the Road Show. You can go to a Fork on the Road Show. Now, why don't you just move back to Chicago and, and work every day on the TV show? They'll probably pay great money, and that's a good life, like you, me on the radio. I'm here every day. News? It's 50 degrees below zero there. <laughs> So it's too you're cold. Absolutely right. Just too cold. It's, it's, right. it's cold outside. I know you're now, in your Mark, you... tower in Santa Barbara, and you. you <laughs> I am. I you am. don't understand, but it's it's freezing. I would. Uh, you know what? It's the perfect situation for me. I go back, I work a little bit, I see my friends, and then I come back here where it's warm and nice and sunny. <laughs> it's so, like, uh, 
You also have the book, Fork on the Road, 400 Cities, One Stomach. And He's always you host working this, Mark DiCarlo. A Fork on the Road show, the number one travel podcast. That's right. And if you live in the Windy City, uh, what, what, what cha- is it ABC's local channel? Seven. channel? Is that channel ABC? 7, Windy City Live. That's cool. uh, how do they do in the ratings? We are we are the 800 pound gorilla in Chicago. We're wow. the big we're the big station. Wow. Now, uh, have you been on CSI or Special Victims Unit? Have you played somebody in one? You know what? I just did an episode of Criminal Minds today. But, wow. Uh, uh, I don't. You know what? I'm not. I don't. Those kind of. I've done some, and I've done a couple serious movies this past year. I can't. It's just so boring to me. I don't. <laughs> it, it, you stand around, and you look serious, you say your lines, and you go sit down for two hours. I like, what, I do you, like what, did you, what do you play on Criminal Minds? What do you play? I actually play a radio DJ, believe it or not. <laughs> oh, of course. How right. come you weren't up for that, Jay? You were on Seinfeld, too, right? Alec I, Berg? Seinfeld and Curb Your Enthusiasm and Tracy Takes On, those are my favorites. And I wow. do, I, I, for people with kids, I do uh, Hugh Neutron on the Jimmy Neutron show. Oh! Wow. Well, now you're part of Mark DiCarlo and Jay Thomas, many people used to say we were, I'm sure we vied for lots of things and didn't know about it, but we were kind of like, you know, kindred spirits. But I, I never uh, thought of you as You're a both competitor. Italian. Uh, yeah, never thought of you as a competitor and always a nice guy. And it's great talking to you again. And this, this uh, kooky or not so kooky uh, producer brought your name up, and that's, that's why you're... Oh, I'm glad, you, you know, I'm glad you called it. it was, it's, uh, I've always been a big fan of yours, and I... I Glad to see you're happy and healthy and back on the radio because the oh. the, the recordings were getting a little old. Whatever happened to uh, Taste of America? Taste of America, we did that for Two years. five years, oh, and then I started doing this uh, Chicago show. The, the book is from the Taste of America days, and the, the podcast horrible. is kind of all about that, too. That reminded me of Jay's like Holiday Road segment where... You're talking to someone that makes some sort of food, but who cares about the food? It's really like these weird people that you meet and you have these awesome conversations with. And stuff. Yeah, and that's the thing the network didn't get. They kept we kept getting notes from them saying we need more video of you chopping onions. Oh my god! Like, no, I know kidding? you're exactly correct. We're, 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 in, a, we're in a pla- we're in a crappy little yeah. restaurant in Athens, Georgia. And I'm talking you're to a right. guy who's a dead ringer from Muddy Waters, and you want more? <laughs> yeah. You want more? You know. Bell pepper chopping. <laughs> oh, I know. It's just you know. The, well, you know, uh, you've read for quiz shows, and I, I would, I would. They called me to do Deal or No Deal during the day, and I, I came in to, to read, and so I fool around a little bit, and the guy stops and says, "Okay, look, look, it's the show, not you. We don't want any jokes. We don't want you to laugh. We don't want you." And I went, "What do you so mean? Why am I here?" <laughs> well, because he, the guy, he says, "Well, Howie doesn't." Tell any jokes? How he doesn't laugh, and and so and and every quiz show I read for, they went. We have no interest in you being a personality. We want you to move the show along. You're good with the time and all. Oh yeah, that's the weirdest thing to me is uh, they don't. You know, they, they 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 the friggin' quiz show. You know the. Well, you know why? Buzzing. Because if 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 it, you 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 inject your own personality in it and you get popular, that's something now that they have to pay extra for. Whereas if they just cast yes. someone who just does it exactly how they want it, they're all interchangeable. You know what well, I mean? Well, a buddy of mine and I, I brought my buddy Rodney Lee Count over, and we go over there, and, and we're do, really doing the pilot or whatever of a, of a quiz show at the, at the Game Show Network, and he and I always joked that we were going to sell a quiz show to, a, to, a, to the Game Show Network called Heads or Tails, <laughs> where the contestants came on and they flipped a coin. That's all they did. <laughs> And we've joked about it forever, heads or tails. That and, and let's watch Retards Fuck are the two shows we're going to try to sell. I have that DVD, going, by the way. It's excellent. Well, you, forget well, you about going to the, play, and, where they pay us to play the game. That's right. Or the other one where you pay to play, and and in the middle of the thing, you uh, you you pay the, uh, the, the the contestant has to bring his own money to the game. <laughs> I like the that. Retards. Do you have to bring yes, your own retard? <laughs> you have to bring your own money. So, so we're sitting in there, and the English guy, and they're being really serious, and I'm, I'm doing everything I can do, and, and hosting, and, and, and sort of being funny, and really learning this game with lights that blink, and this guy from England is there, and all this stuff. And so, we're on a break. And so, I look over at Rodney, and I say, look, this may not be the time to, uh, to do this, but my buddy, uh, Rodney over here is my writing partner, and we produce together. We've been, uh, you know, tossing something around. And let me just see how it lands on you guys. It's a it's a quiz show, and there's just a big quarter. You get a picture of like a big quarter, 
and it's called Heads or Tails. And I want to tell you, we sent these executives at the Game Show Network into a heart attack arrest. They were going, Heads or Tails? That's brilliant. I went, well, we're just, you know, we're, what are the rules? I said, well, you kind of flip a coin. Yes, you know, yes. And in midair, mm -hmm. somebody calls it, but the con but the audience is yelling either heads or tails. Oh, so my there's God. a lot of excitement. I swear to God. You've reinvented television. <laughs> we did it. <laughs> now, I did not get that quiz show. Guess who became the host of that show did 100 episodes and was paid $500,000. Bob Saget. Corbin Burnson. What? Was there really a show called Heads or Tails? It wasn't no, Heads they or never tails, did it. it no. Similar, though. I was reading for a, I uh, forget the name of it, Corbin Burnson got right. the show, and they did four years or five years, and I know the money. It was 100 grand a year for five years, and you shot for like two months or something. was nothing. It was how much and is enough. I got one for you. You know when they were How recasting uh, um, uh, Family Feud, maybe yes. mm -hmm. ten years ago, right? Uh, yeah. It, I go two or three times for the interview, and that's kind of a chatty show. So I was trying to try and be myself. Yeah, it, that's it, good. It gets down to me and one other guy. So I go in for the last audition, and I have this really cool bowling shirt that has bowling pins for buttons, and it's got like an embroidered back, <laughs> and it's you know kind of a cool hipster kind of shirt. So I wear that shirt instead of wearing a suit and tie, figuring, oh, you know, it's kind of my persona, and I'll, I'll let that fly. So I go in. I do what I think is a great job. I get back in the car, and it's my agent calling me. He said, you wore a bowling shirt? You are, forget it. You're not going to get it. And then they hired Richard Karn. That was a million dollars. Wow. Oh, absolutely. I, and, and it's that, it's that stupid. You know, that's, a bowling you know. shirt? Come on. I can't well, believe they, they do that. You know, they they can't see beyond the bowling shirt. You know, well, I haven't told this. I haven't told this story in a long time. But I uh, went to the final audition of The West Wing, and I was uh, being and I, and I was still had been doing really well on TV, but I hadn't worked in a while. And they said, "Look, you don't have to go to the early auditions. We're just going to bring you in for the final." So I go in for the final, and I think I'm going to get it because I've been getting everything for years. And it was for the uh, the sarcastic, um, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, spokesman or whatever. And I was going to be sarcastic. And I walk in, and there's some friends of mine, and Rob Lowe was sitting there, and he's sweating bullets. He's been called back six times. He hadn't worked in forever. I go into this room full of people, and John Mills is there, and Aaron Sorkin is there, and it's packed. And I figure sarcastic, so I said, "Hey, before I read for you, I just want to say I think you, I think you ought to really hire Rob Lowe." <laughs> and they go, they stop because they had read him five times, and they were, they were vacillating whether to hire him or not. He said it to me outside. He says, "You know, you know, they're like bringing me back and bringing me back." He was nervous as shit. I said, "I," and 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 somebody said, "Well, why do you think that?" And I said, "Well, because he has a huge cock." <laughs> and the room, about three people <laughs> laugh, and I uh, said, and you know, if you look at that video, which is what everybody wasn't saying, you know what I mean? Right. If you look at that video. What was the 800 pound him, cock in the room? Exactly. If you look at that video in Georgia, you'll see the girl's eyes are like two feet ahead of that squiggly line that they blocked his. his you his saying cock all this in with. the room? I did. I said it all, and I figured I'm being the sarcastic, you know, uh, guy. I hear somebody say, a whisper, how would you like to work with him for five years? Like oh, wah, wah. Thanks for playing. I leave, I leave the room. The casting director, who had been at Warner Brothers forever, this gay guy, runs out, hugs me, laughing so hard he's crying. Hugs me, said it's the funniest thing, the greatest thing I've ever heard um, <laughs> since I've been auditioning. I said, well, what do you think? He goes, oh, they hated you. They absolutely <laughs> hated you. I get back in the car, and the agent, my agent, um, um, uh, uh, Tim Angle, phone rings. Hello. He goes, what did you do? What did you do in there? I go, what do you mean? He goes, did you say that Rob Lowe had a huge cock? Did you say that in an audition? I yeah. said, yeah, I was wow. trying to be the star. He goes, Jay, not only do they not want you on West Wing, 
<laughs> they don't want you on the lot. They don't want you to come back on the lot. So take all. your tiny prick and go home. No, let me tell you what I did, and I'm not joking. I drove home to Santa Barbara. You think I'm kidding. I told my wife, we're packing, and we moved to New York. I left town. So That's you left sure. town because Rob Lowe is hung. <laughs> it was, you know what? It spread all over the place that I was this fucking crazed guy that said crazy shit. And I, you know, I was totally sober. And I, you know, I just thought it was, and, and he got the job, right? Does he Rob Lowe know this story? You know what? He might have. Now, I've been to his home. He lives in Santa Barbara. We, we know each other. You've been to his he home had, and you've never brought I, this up to him? No, never. Oh, Did you, you ever see his to cup? tell him, Jay. I don't know if I have the guts. You to can it, to do it. You Maybe do now. It. But you know what, Mark? It was because, yes, that's why they were worried about hiring him, right? So I just, you know, went right to the... Wow. To the, not to the jugular, but those big veins right on the penis. Was that uh, Mark DiCarlo. Well, that's the blue vein. Uh, watch him at uh, Windy City Live. And A Fork in the Road is his... Uh, a fork uh, yeah. on Mark, the Road uh, show. Uh, Christina, give Mark my private number, and we'll get together sometime out here, okay, Mark? Love it, Jay. Hey, good talking to you guys. Kevin, nice to talk to you. Yeah, yeah you too, Mark. Mark. All right. Vic Henley at the Gotham Club tonight. Kevin, yes. I'll see you later. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye-bye.